Good evening and welcome to Drakenheim. This is the uh, the Dungeon Dudes weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition live stream campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running the game as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Sebastian Crow, the half-elf shadow sorcerer. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Denitis, playing Veo Senya, the tabaxi gloom stalker ranger. And Joe O'Gorman, playing Pluto Jackson, the human battle master. Thank you for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the very first time, Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything Dungeons and Dragons, including advice for, for players and guides for Dungeon Masters. We just posted a new video last week on five awesome house, simple house rules for combat, which is very popular right now. Yes, so much well. so that maybe we might implement them in Drakenheim. Ooh. We should, because I like the criticals. You, you do. Okay. So for those of you watching, uh, go tune in to us on YouTube. Watch our video on five simple house rules for better combat. And tell us if you think we should start using them in the Drakenheim campaign. We already kind of use some of them, but we, um, but some of them we don't. So we would love to hear if you think we should just start using them or not. Yeah. You can also join us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch. Check us out from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube. We are also very pleased to announce that Dungeons of Drakenheim is now available as an audio-only podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. The first eight episodes of Drakenheim are now available on podcast platforms, so you can take it with you wherever you want to go. And we are working our way through the backlog so that all of Drakenheim will be available as a podcast. And those drop currently every Monday. So check those out. <laughs> Jill, what else you got to tell everybody about? Uh, of course, you can take a look at the links below to check out our merchandise on Teespring. Uh, you can take a look below both on YouTube and on Twitch, or you can check us out on bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch for all your favorite t-shirts like Troll Killer. This week's episode of Dungeons & Drakenheim has been sponsored by our great friends at Dimension 20. We are spreading the news that Brennan Lee Mulligan and a team of veteran college humor comedians are back for the third season of their D&D live play series called The Unsleeping City. If you love exploring uh, the dark, mysterious underbelly of a fantastic city filled with crazy magic and funny, quirky, and awesome characters, and I know you do because you're watching our show, <laughs> it's really worth checking out the first few episodes on the Dimension 20 YouTube channel. It's a wonderful example of just how far you can adapt the rules of D&D 5e into a modern magical setting. And I've really been inspired and a little intimidated by just how good Brennan is at describing and setting the scene. So I'm trying to crib some notes. You can watch the full series and much more by subscribing at dropout.tv. And you can follow the links in the description below if you'd like to save 50% off your subscription. With that, let's return to the ruins. <laughs> Drakenheim is no more. Struck by a falling star, the city bathed in eldritch fire on that woeful eve. The tumultuous aftermath brought chaos, families torn asunder, and a kingdom shattered. Fifteen years later, monsters stalk the haunted streets of Drakenheim. Caught amidst rival factions struggling to rule the rubble, three unlikely partners venture forth into the crumbling city in search of riches, renown, and revenge. Welcome back to the ruins of Drakenheim. Our heroes stand in the ground floor of the shattered tower of the Amethyst Academy. This great and imposing structure looming large over the ruins at over 700 feet tall has been a beacon and a symbol of the destruction of the city. For as the heart of the Amethyst Academy's former power in Drakenheim, a piece of the ancient meteor that crashed through Drakenheim broke off and shattered through the tower, yet the top remains floating in place in defiance of gravity. Our heroes have come to this ancient tower at the behest of the Amethyst Academy, here to reclaim it. 
so that it can be used as once again as the staging ground and sanctum of the Academy's power in Drakenheim. You are in the ground level of this ancient tower. From the outside, it is an imposing monolith, again, over 700 feet tall, made of a material that isn't obsidian, isn't glass, isn't stone or metal, but has the shimmer and sheen of all three. And yet now that you stand inside the tower proper, you can see outside as if the walls were just made of glass from the inside. There are great bay windows that open up, uh, completely paneless windows that open up into the city, giving you the view of the campus grounds and the gardens and the lake outside. And you can see the pillars that hold up the tower, so each tower level, and there's internal walls which are solid. But beyond that, you can see right out, like a one-way mirror. You are in what is this lobby level, arranged with what was once a great fountain from which a tree floated that has now crashed down in the center. Whatever gravity held it in place, now gone. Several sitting areas, tables and chairs are arranged, and a great desk at the center of the space in front of four large doorways that are arranged in a hallway opposite at the end of the room. These doorways, two of them are burst open, overflowing with rubble. Another, the doors slide open and close, banging against each other erratically. And a third, the double doors are closed. These are doors made of metal. Elsewhere on this ground floor, to the west and east sides, there are sets of spiral staircases leading both up and down. It's just occurred to me that uh, the Amethyst Academy did not decide to give us blueprints or a general map of this building. They really did not equip us for this. Uh, But you've been to these before, so you know your way around. I've been to one that I went to school. They're all pretty different, right? They're all pretty different. They are vastly different. Mm. I recognize maybe a symbol. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I remember that from school. I forget what it means. I I remember it. (laughs) I I have three things written down in my notes here. Um, Secure basement, find staff of power, override nexus. That's all I've got. We ready for this? Uh, Yeah. (laughs) No. That door looks concerning. Which one? The big Wherever banging the one? one is. That's, the uh, one that's like... Yeah. I mean, it just as, wants as to it close. As it opens and closes, once in a while you can hear this crackle of electric energy and this clap of thunder that re- reverberates down. And actually, whenever when it goes off, you can feel the shake through the rest of the building. Uh, that's not a good sound. It's probably some sort of torture device. I don't, you know, I don't think you schools... place the person in the in like their head in the doorway, and it crackles that with energy, and it just and it. <laughs> I'm saving that for later. Like we could use that. That's like probably like that's like a an in, very intimidating lobby uh, <laughs> addition. But respect <laughs> to, to the respect to, to the mages guild <laughs> to the clock tower. <laughs> yeah, like this. maybe we can. Do, yeah, we can take that. Take that home with us. I'm gonna excavate this door for the clock tower. <laughs> yeah. There is a staircase going up and down. Our our first mission is to secure the basement. Because the basement gives us the... Uh, That's where the, the teleportation teleport. circle is, I think. And if I know anything about magic, doorways. Are you saying we should try these doorways? I mean, no. Just the teleportation circle. But there were stairs leading <laughs> down, correct? There are. Um, there are sets of... So the these four doorways are arranged at the north end of the of this level and the room kind of wraps around the doorways in a C sort of shape. It's a very large and open plaza. So the whole expanse on this level is this big open room that's about 150 feet by 150 feet going the full extent of the ground level of the tower. And then it wraps around in the C shape around where this hallway 
flanked by these doors. So there's a set of two on one side and a set of two on the other side. And then surrounding them is a fountain where this tree has collapsed down. Mm. And then on the east and west side, there is a set of spiral stairs that are protruding from the wall. And you realize when you look at them, the protrusion of the staircase isn't something that is reflected on the external architecture of the building. Oh, magic. My mind. <laughs> yeah, welcome to where I went to school. All the buildings are kind of... <laughs> Yeah, it's. You, I get lost. You, you know when you're like, it's your first day at school and you're like trying to figure out where your classes are and you're like 10 minutes late to every class? Was that your whole school? That was my whole school. Like, <laughs> I was, was never on time to a class. And apparently everybody else was, so it was just me. Mm. It was It was hard. Man, there were staircases <laughs> that went to places I just, I <laughs> staircases to places. I, I don't even know where I As was. As you recall from your youth, Sebastian, the halls of the Amethyst Academy in Witchcross, which was more of a castle than a tower, were filled with wings that were completely empty. Much like this t- tower, it is larger than the number of people that would live and work in it. And so it is entirely possible that there are sections of this tower that were abandoned even before the building was destroyed by the meteor. Or hit by the media, rather. Guys, I don't think my uh, navigation skills are going to be <laughs> as much use in here. That's okay. What do you? What I'll do you uh, smell? What do you? What, what does your stomach say? Uh, it, it's kind of just grumbling right now. It's not really giving me a direction. Just a general grumble. Yeah. And um, as, as well, to, speaking of things in effect, you're all still under the effects of Aqua Expergo, mm-hmm. so you have resistance to radiant damage and you ignore saving throws that you make against Delirium and the Haze, but please mark down how many times you do this. I will tell you, and please write down how many saves you've ha- you have to make. And as well, the telepathic bond between yourselves and Eldrick is still in effect as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh hey, man. Oh, sorry, Eldrick. Oh, we could the... use him. Uh, Eldrick. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> where should we be going first? What am I looking at right now? <laughs> I can't see through your eyes, so you'll have to tell me what you're seeing, and I'll do my best. We're in the lobby. <laughs> We've right. made it into the lobby. From what I know and what my colleagues can tell me, the levels below you, the basement levels, contain the teleportation chambers, the summoning chambers, and the morgue. The levels above immediately should at first contain the great halls, the apprentices' chambers, and then the workshops, lecture halls, and classrooms. Starting on the third level, you will find the library. The library here extends the entire length of the tower up to the nexus. We gotta go there. The entire height of the tower. So they really focused on the library. Indeed. The library itself is about half the tower all the way up. And the other half is buildings, is classrooms, lecture halls, and in many cases, several abandoned le- levels. From what I found, there were about 80 apprentices here before when the tower was struck, and about 30 or more on full guild mages that were here. What should our first move be? I leave that up to you. You, we do absolutely need to secure the teleportation chambers, the nexus, and the staff of power. They're all of equal importance. However, what you may be able to find as well, if you can, the tower itself is warded against external scrying and teleportation magic oh perfect so and i expect that it is also gone erratic so Mm -hmm. as a warning if you have any abilities or powers or spells of teleportation do not use them to try to traverse between the floors or you might end up in the abattoir is that like a fancy cabinet or what what's what's an abattoir (laughs) 
Most Academy Towers, this one included, have an abattoir that is used to guard against extraplanar incursion. Oh, so like a jail for teleportation. Exactly. Mm. I don't want to go there. No cape. <laughs> no, uh... As long as... No thunderstep. No you may thunderstep. be able to use... Tele- you can use teleportation magic as long as you can see your target. But if you use it to exit the tower or teleport between floors, it may trigger that defense. So be warned. In right. addition... Go where you know. <laughs> but if you have the staff of power... You will be able to control these defenses. Nice. In addition, there are scrying orbs throughout the tower that do allow those within the tower to observe other locations within it. If you can find one of these, you may be able to survey the area a little bit more safely. Mm. Do you know how to use those, Sebastian? I can figure it out. Figure it out as we go. Yeah. I mean, it's a circle. Like, I figured out my orb. It's just another orb. Yours is a light orb. <laughs> uh, it's kind of heavy. Don't say that. So down, downstairs? Do you want to try? I mean, sure. if he's saying that the teleportation circle is key and we're right here. You know, okay. It's only one floor down. The only difference is, is, like he said, if without the staff of power, the teleportation circle is, from what I understand, not usable until we figure out the wards it also could you be handy you want to ask that to Eldrick? yeah i would uh, yeah because i i feel like we're yeah Eldrick. if we secure this teleportation circle can anyone use it can you guys use it right away or does this magic not interfere you will need to investigate whether or not it is safe to use it at all the oh. last time that we tried to teleport anyone here they were we never heard from them again we can only assume that they were killed it also might be beneficial for us to first find one of these orbs so that we can then sp- uh, uh, scry mm. on the location of the basement and maybe see mm. what the situation is down there before we head down there. Or if you, have, like the, if you have the staff, or if we have the staff, it might make it a little bit easier to control. Indeed. You also may find that there are rooms and areas of the tower that are keyed to their original occupants. It may be easiest to get up the tower through the library. Since that the library itself, unfortunately, would have been caught in the destruction and it, if memory serves it is a many tiered room. It might be open to the destruction above. Mm. So we need to find a scrying orb, the staff of power, activate the nexus, secure the basement. So basement last. You guys want, yeah, let, let's try to get. Let's go up, up, up. Let's get this tower back online. And that way we can hopefully spy on the basement, see the situation. Mm-hmm. And then head down there and secure that. And once all that's done, maybe we'll be in a good place. Yeah. I think so. So I guess we're in exploring mode then. I have a question for Aldrich. I'm in the lobby and nice fountain feature, (laughs) but this one door keeps jamming closed and it's, there's like electricity. I don't know if you can, can he hear our feelings? No, he can only (laughs) hear, he can only. Uh, It's loud. It's just Aldrich. It's really loud and distracting and it looks like some sort of um, torture device. It's a, there's like doors and they open and close. What? Do you know what this is? It sounds is? like noise banging. Yeah. Yeah. It looks really banging. scary. Is it in the center of the room? Yes. Well, those are the elevators. What? <laughs> those are the elevators. What is that? Come again? <laughs> <laughs> the Academy Tower has four, in addition to the library, reaching up the entire tower. You don't have to take the stairs. There's several shafts, chimneys in the tower that conjure a platform of force that will lift you between the floors. Do I know about this? Have I ever seen one? This is unique to this tower. Wow. You called it an elevator? It is called an elevator. So innovative. Because it elevates you. 
Indeed. Uh, it's an elevating experience. <laughs> I would have called that a levitator. Now the question is, do we want to scarily I mean, go in the big banging door or do we want to just take the well, stairs? Well, there's four of them. Two of them are, are busted up, you said. Two of them have rubble. Two of them are filled with rubble. Um, one of them's banging and the other one is... Cl- the doors are closed. Guys, we could, we could try to take the elevator. <laughs> I mean, mm. it seems a little scary, though. Yeah. In a giant tower full of... Uh, uh, of random oh, magic. <laughs> you non-magic folk, let's take the stairs. Let's not use the magical force elevator. No, I love magic. Poof. <laughs> love magic. <laughs> poof, poof. Oh, guys, if you're going to put me in a box. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> to go up. The go up box. Oh, man. I mean, Veo can climb. <laughs> like, you just if climb you, up the side. If of- you're more comfortable taking the stairs, then, I mean, it... it it does help if we kind of, I guess, we're looking for a few things. So we do need to explore a bit. The stairs. So maybe the <sighs> stairs allow us to go floor by floor and check things out. Yeah, I like that. I like that idea. It's good that we know they're okay. here. But once we're at the top, I'm taking one of these things down. Or, 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 if I mean, if it's, there's a window or something, we can always feather fall down. Mm-hmm. I mean, worst we case have scenario. Options. We have options. Can magic one way or magic another? You guys want to head upstairs? Thank you, Alric. I'm just saying it might be thrilling to just fall off the building. <laughs> thrilling. <laughs> thrilling. base jumping. Woo! <laughs> I'm going to start a business when the city gets, you know, up and running. <laughs> yeah, you're already planning your... <laughs> yeah, we got to get the tourism up a bit. Yeah. So... Foot traffic. Would you like to investigate these elevators further or would you like to check out the stairs? <laughs> Do you want to check if they're working? Just so we know it's like at least a uh, an option. I, I approach the one set of doors that looks intact. Okay. Right beside, between the sets of doors are in a, in a niche in the wall, there are a set of metal levers beside, and one lever is beside each pair of doors. So there's, again, there's four of them total down a, a hallway that's about 30 feet wide. Each of the doors are opposite each other and made of metal. And there are these pull levers beside each one. I grab the lever next to the door. What position? Is it like down or up? up? I pull it down. Pull it down and then it releases and as you pull it down the metal doors slide open with a kind of hiss. And As they do, you see there is a rush of air that comes whooshing out. And quite suddenly, this box of glowing blue force forms in the chimney. And as it forms, these glowing arcane runes appear on the wall of the of the box of force that say um first one says l the next one says two the next one says three the next one says four five six seven and then a little bit of text appears beside each some of it is a little bit garbled and you can see that the list is trying to go further down but it stops and start and jarbles up and then you just see this the letter E is repeated over and over and over and over again as the list continues. That's probably where it broke. Yeah. Like the tower is busted up. Yeah. So probably can't go that far. Like maybe we could just go up to the, yeah, the toppest part, the highest part. But we also need to, we don't know that the staff of power is at the top. We don't know where the scrying or there's no reason why to go right now, but what we could do is is at the top, you know, that big gap that we're like, how are we going to get that gap? Yeah. That could be... Yeah, but there's a ladder. As the words form, oh, yeah, you the can weird see ladder. by the word L, it says lobby. And then in... Beside two, it says great halls. Beside three, it says lectures, reading rooms, library entrance. Beside four, it says library stacks. Beside five, it says workshops. Besides six, it says apprentices' workshops. And besides seven, 
It says Apprentice's Apartments. Mm. Um, so where do you think we... Do you want to start on two? Work our way up? Are we taking the stairs or this box? Yeah, we'll take the box. <laughs> <laughs> the box. The box. <laughs> the box could be anything. It's glowing. <laughs> you know how much you want in one of those. <laughs> Pluto? Oh, it's only one floor. I'm, we, hes- I, it, I'm gonna I'm going to dip my head in and kind of poke it with my spear or it my feels sword solid the the glowing magical force it's like this blue force it's almost it's translucent but it's solid as long as we don't have to get in the death one <laughs> guys what's the worst that could happen and i <laughs> hop in no I hop hey, in you are standing in the box i come into the box i come into the box and i trust that the academy would never put me in any danger with their magic <laughs> He gave us a bomb. I'm I'm taking an elevator and I I press two. You go to press the two and your finger goes right through the words and nothing happens. Do you have to like say something? What was, what was the second floor? What did it say next to it? How do you recover from that though? Cause we're all trying to look impressed. I, 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 my hand goes through it and I go, this is part of it. (laughs) Great hall, please. Nothing happens. Oh. <laughs> this usually works. It's. It looks like it's an illusion that your hand is just going right through. Is there any sound coming from the elevator? Second floor, please. <laughs> There's the rushing of wind. And when you look up, it looks like this elevator actually stops at the seventh floor. You can see that the ceiling is in place huh. rather than broken away. So it either doesn't go all the way up the tower or it stops. Floor two, please. <laughs> Try your magic. Use your mage hand. I have mage hand push. <laughs> the side. mage hand pushes it. <laughs> <laughs> I just magicked my way. <laughs> you don't have to tell me, Pluto. I was testing... And I, I don't have a good excuse. Should he, I, I should have used my MHN and it would have been so impressive. <laughs> what happened? I, I see you guys using those all the as, time. As like you just press <laughs> the, the, the button. How do you see mine? It's invisible. The bars of force appear and trap you inside. <laughs> she realizes that you are, you are, this is a force cage. I spell. panic. I panic. <laughs> that you're now inside. And the doors in front of you close. Oh, God. And this smooth jazz begins to feel <laughs> As the elevator softly rises hmm. Hmm. and so begins bad. to uh, rise up, and it raises up uh, about thirty, maybe forty feet, before coming to another pair of metal doors that slide open and the bars fade away, and there's this audible ding, <laughs> and I I jump out. <laughs> Oh man! I take the same caution as I entered to exit. Like I'm just like checking. <laughs> I walk out just normal, and I'm just like, you guys. <laughs> that was that was. Crazy. They could have been like it easily could have been as far as I know like a box that you just walk in and it murders you. Like yeah. as, as far as I know, that's what the major like they give us bombs and stuff. There's it's totally plausible. Like I don't think my fears are unfounded. <laughs> no, I thought there was a good chance we could have died. Just gas starts filling in. <laughs> It's like, oh, cool. And then Oscar's just laughing at us. Like, I don't want to fall for that. All right. So we step out onto the the second floor. So you step out into a short hallway that is almost identical to the one that you just came out of. Yeah. Um, So even once again, you can see opposite you is the malfunctioning elevator that's crackling with lightning. And the other two that are collapsed and filled with rubble, the door is broken out. And there is another water fountain in front of you. This one, instead of having the tree coming out over it, it is just a fountain, a a font of water. And you can see that the there are several gargoyles that are all facing inwards. And the water is coming out of various orifices in the gargoyles. One from its ear, one is like spitting it out of its nose. The other, it's spitting it out of its mouth, <laughs> and the other, it's kind of, the water is coming out of the gargoyles. But, um, and the this, but it is a font of fresh, cool water. And then, as you look to the south, the hall opens into a massive, pillared, great hall which is arranged with four <coughs> rows of long, 
tables made of blackened marble. And there are several benches and st- stools all around. You could probably seat over a hundred people in this hall. And then it comes up to a set of steps where there is a large, majestic table carved of black and white marble that has 12 high-backed chairs along it as well. There is, at the other end, it goes all the way to where the walls are, and there are several massive murals on the wall between very thin windows. And each of the murals depicts a mage holding the ident- an identical staff. And you look up across them, and there are seven of these murals hung up along the walls, and one of them is unmistakably Leneth Eventide. <gasps> um, and she, she is standing, holding the staff, like, over her head, like this, with her spellbook in her other hand. And in this depiction, she has been depicted with these kind of flyer fairy-like wings coming out of her back. Um, all of the other mages that are depicted on these murals are in otherwise uh, like stentious garb. One of the, the mages is wearing a suit of gold and red plate mail and he has this mask over his face and this and has all of these orbs of blue glowing power coming from his hands and feet um the others are similarly garbed in completely ostentatious regalia and each of them bears the staff of power this black staff with that holds in it what can unquestionably be an orb of delirium. It is very clearly this purple orb that is in the staff. But this is like, these are also like before Leneth, even to like, these yes, are other... it looks like, um, it looks like there is, there was one other woman that came after Leneth. Mm. She is, um, she is this elderly looking human woman that bears the staff and she is wearing this blue blue and purple robes with kind of these luminescent gems floating around her head. This is the second time that this has come up, but delirium existed before the meteor. Yeah. This is freaking me out a little bit. I wonder if the Academy knows anything about that. Beyond the rest of the hallways are several doors, several great doors that... Um, and you can smell in the air this spicy aroma, like something is cooking food. And as you look out <laughs> into, into the chamber, all of a sudden, there is this procession that comes out, out of one of the doors. And it's several buckets and mops and brooms <laughs> that come out one of the doors and begin cleaning the hallway on their own. Wow, so fancy. Eldrick, we're in the uh, cleaning broom hall (laughs) on the second floor. Uh, We're looking at the paintings of all of the past um, mages who ran this facility. Question, delirium before the meteor. What do you know? Delirium before the meteor? The the Staff of Power uh, seems to have an orb of what looks like delirium in all of these paintings that I'm looking at here. Uh, but this dates back l- l- probably hundreds and hundreds of years. It must be a coincidence. We've never had delirium before. This isn't the first time I've ran into something that hinted at this, but... Very well. Get There's back more to than you. Purple one, right? is the color of the Amethyst Academy. We've used purple orbs and various implements and all of our equipment for generations. Mm. Okay. If we, if I honestly ask myself, am I looking at a purple orb or am I looking at delirium? Like, am I, am I on the fence about it based That's on the painting? That's up to you to decide. Okay. But it, but it has. Like, the, does it look like this, the same one that he artistic, carries around? It is an artistic rendering. But it is very uncanny. It's like, why? Mm. 
And there's more than yeah. one, right? I guess we'll know when we see it too. There's right? two. Two of them are carrying orbs. It looks like the 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 staff of power depicted looks like that orb that Sebastian has has been fixed into the head of the staff. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. So I smell smells. You smell smells. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna follow that. Um, I'm gonna follow that smell. All right, one of the other doors opens nose. out, opens up, and a bunch of floating plates of food. Oh, I'm on it. Come out. <laughs> And they come out of the doors and begin setting themselves on the tables. And all the cutlery walks out from there as well and jumps up onto the table and sets itself down. And the the food includes, like, fresh legs of mutton, beef, fresh vegetables. There are then there's some clinking wine glasses that come out with a flying tankard that flies out and it has what these wooden wings carved into it and it flies and it starts pouring and it starts setting this table for like 80 people I yeah grab one of the tankards I li- i'm literally on the table like yeah stuffing this food <laughs> into my mouth right. like literally like oh, guys i don't know if these guys ate so well here <laughs> this is great i should have joined this academy a long time ago for poison no i was right. I, I, she's just eating our, our gorge <laughs> I, I'm like I'm like sniffing the tankard and I look over and you're just on the table shoveling. I feel very comfortable now eating some food <laughs> because uh, I mean <laughs> we're one team. Does one it dream. taste okay? One team, one dream. It tastes amazing. This is the best food I've it, ever eaten. It, Even better than the palace. Um, in fact, it tastes so good that you think you might have trouble stopping. Oh my gosh! Oh, I, I put the tankard back down and I I, I back away. And I just wait. I'm eating. I'm, I'm just I, 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 I felt if Veo's like my Veo's the tester. I, if she's like, I don't uh, want another situation where all three of us pass out. So it's coming out from a certain area, right? It's, it's coming out and you can see the doors o- open up and you can see behind the doors there is a kitchen there and the kitchen has this stove and this fireplace and this cauldron that are cooking themselves. <laughs> Wanted, guys, we have to. Are you changing towers? Can we just? <laughs> are you just trading? Never towers? leave. Never. Oh, don't right, worry I, about Dragonheim. Can't find the staff. <laughs> Who wants to I be the find... next, you know, Lord Commander? Because I'm, I'm, I'm here and I'm not leaving. Um, as it's coming out the door, I'm literally like piling things into my arms and eating it. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps coming. Where, like, how? and, and as, as you as you sit down and as you finish one thing, they. They bring out like a soup and another course. Yes. <laughs> Sebastian, open up your bag of folding. Uh, I, I actually am walking towards like the kitchen where this is being prepared and I start looking around at all the ingredients. I, I'm looking. Does anything seem suspicious other than the obvious magicalness of this all? Um, you go inside the kitchen and in the kitchen are several brooms that are cleaning up and there is all these pots and pans and pieces of cutlery and and knives that are going into a pantry beside and there'll be like two forks that are pushing out like a potato or or a bunch of or just all of a sudden this this haunch of meat flies out of the pantry and a knife cuts it up in the air and puts it into the oven and the stove and it cooks over over it and it pulls itself off the food pulls itself off the spit and falls onto a plate and the plate picks up and levitates through the air and then is set down on the table doesn't get very par- far past the door because i'm literally waiting for it i'm like i'm ready like flying food <laughs> yeah <laughs> but there's like there's, there's nothing here that seems like <laughs> dangerous make an arcana check I mean, just watch out for like Don't knives. Don't ruin this like illusion for me. <laughs> yeah. <Vero. laughs> Don't ruin this. 24. You walk into the pantry and the pantry is immaculately organized. It's huge. It's like a walk-in pantry. And as the cupboards of the pantry open, they open up and this food spills out. And then when the doors close and they open again, different food is inside. I and the food rolls out and is prepared and as you do so you feel something bump into you and you realize this spell is conjuring a hero's feast and it's being prepared by unseen servants 
I grab a piece of meat, <laughs> <laughs> just a small piece, and suddenly, I eat it. Suddenly, want to? It's eat. amazing. Join us, Sebastian. Oh my God! Don't join s- us. Don't s- <laughs> <laughs> I look back, and you're doing that, Pluto. Why? Eyes open. I don't know. It's just it's good food. Um, look, look at Veo. <laughs> this is so good. I can't believe it. I'm starting to feel yeah, man, bad because I'm eating a lot, but uh, well in a I'm while. Keep like eating. Maybe the last time we ate well was like with your family. So like, enjoy yourself. To, you know, let the guard down. This is way better than your, uh, you know, new mom's cooking. Sorry. <laughs> Like, I know I hate mages, but if this is mages, we're going to be okay. <laughs> Everything's going to be okay, I think. I'm so cautious right now. I don't know. Um, I, I I go and I sit next to Pluto, and I just very calmly eat a little bit of the food. Okay. You can all roll a d20. Uh-oh. <laughs> you were just waiting for that, weren't you? Come on um, in. The water's great. Oh my god! Oh just no. as as. Oh no! Okay, oh no. <laughs> what do we got? Uh, I got a fourteen. I got a fifteen. I got a one. <laughs> okay. Oh, Sebastian, why? An hour passes as you gorge yourselves on food. Mm. Um, and all of you gain the benefits of the hero's feast spell, which means that you. Um, are cured of all diseases and poison. You regain all your hit points. You can take the benefits of a short rest if you would like to. Um, and you are now immune to poison and being frightened. And you make wisdom saving throws with advantage. In addition... What? Each of you, your hit point maximum increases by 15. Oh. Like temp? Or just it no, it's just a, increases? It's a raw increase to your hit point maximum. By fifteen one five. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! Oh wow! Yeah. So As the meal comes to an end, the brooms and the buckets come out and start clearing all because it set a feast for eighty people. <laughs> And well about, I ate the, about sixty uh, of that. They <laughs> did quite the job on and, it. And <laughs> the the brooms and the rags all like start inching their way out, Wisdom. and they start yeah. cleaning off. They cl- and start I hiss clearing at them. off the tables. <laughs> That's my food. And, and, and as you hiss at them, one of the brooms like shakes itself at you, <laughs> and and one of the and two of the um and two of the rags start wrapping themselves around the dirty plate and trying to no, pull it out of your <laughs> wrestling no, your, no, with your hands. Sebastian, quick, did you not put in your bag of holding? I was serious about let that. It, let it go, Veo. It's no. time to, we have start to licking, go. Lick the plate. Just lick it. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and seeing that you're, you're, you're pulling away, several of the brooms start grouping up together and they kind of form a line of battle and begin... <laughs> stepping towards you aggressively <laughs> and these buckets jump up forward and the table kind of begins to wrangle a little bit as as well as the animated objects are, are, react negatively to, to being so aggressively kept from their duty. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's time for us to back out of this room now. Okay, okay, okay. How long has it been? Like an an hour. hour. Wow. Shouldn't we have been doing something else? (laughs) (laughs) You talked me into eating. I got carried away. Um, Yeah, we should. I mean, we're only on this this Expergio stuff for a certain amount of time. We just wasted a whole bunch of time. Yeah, we still blew an hour. (laughs) Oh, and when it comes... Oh, and now it's going to be, and, and we're going to be full. Sound. And as the, as the broom starts moving towards you, the stove starts walking out of the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> and it's crashing forward. And they look really aggressive. The, these look like, ang- this is some angry furniture. Run away. We're good here. We, we're thank done. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. That was delicious. Um, uh, when's the next meal time? I start saying thank you in... Um, Undercommon, elvish, and common. And I just repeat, like, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, make a persuasion check. <laughs> Come on, that dice. Stop rolling that I get a 10. <laughs> I'm done with that dice. Is done. Um, <laughs> the stove seems sa- satisfied with your thanks, but the brooms are not happy about the situation. Um, the, the, the stove meanders back towards the kitchen. 
Um, but the brooms uh, are are going to one, one of the brooms flies forward and tries to smack you in the face, Sebastian. <laughs> and it gets a 15 against your AC. <laughs> I cast shield. <laughs> ah! no! So the broom flies at you and it's it, it, smashing towards the face and you block it with the shield, shield spell. And then the other brooms begin to move in. Roll for initiative. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh man. Are we... And now I hate mages again. <laughs> oh, there we go. There you go. I'm not mad about it. <laughs> what do you got? 17. 17? 22. 22? 7. Okay. So the brooms are all flying towards you. Um, there's about eight of them. Sebastian, you're first to act. What are you going to do? There's eight brooms. Uh huh. And I don't have the great hall set up, so we're just going to keep it in our minds. I am going to. Are they all like close together? Yeah. All right. I'm going to. Uh, shoot web at all of the brooms. Okay. Yeah. They're so really as they come towards me, I go, no, wait, stop! And I, I throw out a web that just sticks to all of the brooms. As you cast the web spell, the portrait, the painting of your mother comes to life and casts counterspell. <laughs> And you hear her voice ring out and say, No magic in the Great Hall. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> uh, uh, brute force? Pluto, I need you to smash. Veo. <laughs> Pluto, smash. <laughs> Something. I don't know. Uh, I start backing away. I, okay. just, I just back up a lot. Veo, you're up. Do, do we are we running away or are we actually gonna fight these brooms? I'm like, are they worth the effort? Well, uh, um, are the brooms like coming after us or are they after like dirt or f debris on the floor that we're standing on? That's a very good question because that's what I want to look at. I'm looking at the ground, like I want to try to find a peace offering, like kicking the. It like, looks like the getting out the of the meal way. is over. Yeah, and the brooms are trying to clean up. Yeah, I, I'm, um, I'm <laughs> then I on I guess my turn uh, use minor illusion to make can I make a, a pile of like food and, and dirt mm. on the ground as you cast minor oh, illusion yeah, no magic. The, I'm like the, no. the archmage in the in the red armor <laughs> animates in the portrait and says, no casting in the Great Hall, and counterspells your minor Cool, illusion. cool, 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 cool. Um, I'm gonna feel an agility and just gonna boot it towards the stairs. There you go. Um, Bye, thanks for the meal, see ya. I'm like backed up to the door and you just run past me and I'm like squeezing out the door, or the, wait, is, is it just open? Uh, the, most of the space is open, but there are the, the oh, spiral good. staircases from the lower floors are seen on the opposite sides. I'm like well. squeezing towards the staircase. Like <laughs> so you run down them. the hall. I don't know if a bow will be any good against these, but poor brooms are okay. just trying to do their job. The brooms fly forward uh, towards Sebastian and Paluto. <laughs> <laughs> um, and both of you get broomstick. Um, Paluto. I get the highest attack against against, get against you as an 18. As I, I picture they're like blunting me, but it's <laughs> yeah. not doing anything. Like they're just a bunch of brooms hitting me. And Sebastian, I get a seven, an eight, and a critical hit. <laughs> so they're bouncing off of me as well. And I'm like, this isn't so. And then one hits me like right in the- It gets you in the eye. Yeah. Ow! <laughs> Why weren't you wearing your goggles? Oh, I'm like, goggles. <laughs> And, and you take 15 points of bludgeoning oh damage. My God. <laughs> oh my broom... <laughs> I just imagine actually the broom flies at you. And instead of going through like your eye or your face, it gets you right in the gut. Oh, oh yeah. Like, just the, just takes the, the wind out of you. I think it's time yeah. to go. <laughs> Run away. <sighs> Run away. Um, 
<laughs> you're in the, are you in the elevator? Uh, oh, I thought we were, are we going to the, the elevator? The elevator? We're, I guess I don't know where the stairs are, yeah. so, uh, towards the so elevator. So the great hall, um, has the kitchen rooms yeah. and the storerooms. It's flanked on either side of that, but then there's a hallway going to the stairs on either side. Oh, I, I went towards the stairs. Are you going to go to the east or the west? Oh, um, west. Okay. <laughs> Follow your nose. Up. Uh, I pick up the downed Sebastian <laughs> and I'm just going to one arm carry him and uh, I say something like we should have tipped better <laughs> and then, and then uh, thank you for the meal goodbye and then I run after Veo clunk 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 you're always sweeping me off my feet <laughs> see what I did there <laughs> oh. okay do they pursue um the the brooms, as you you run off, the brooms appear to start to go back to their 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 business, um, and as you run down the hallway, um, I eventually the, uh, let you back on your feet. Like I, yeah, I'm once I'm you okay. carry yourself, okay. once you catch your breath, like the amount of energy I just <laughs> wasted on trying to stop brooms. <laughs> I don't want to know what the rest of this tower is like. There's going to be an issue. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? I need an Holy awkward delirium. Yeah. Shh. The, the brooms pull, uh, pull themselves off and go back to their work as you vacate the Great Hall. Say, holy macaroni, those are some angry uh, cleaning utensils. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> they, yeah, they were not happy. Um is this like was this anything like your other experience you know they had cleaning brooms but usually we didn't have people trying to eat more than their share <laughs> okay are you and throwing fight with them they cooked blaming? for 80 people i was just having whatever the brooms i wanted only it came fine. after us when she refused to let go of the plate so <laughs> yes i am blaming them if i'm gonna refuse to let go of a plate it's because i can run away from them you gotta work out there <laughs> i took a broom to the to the chest it hurt <laughs> All right, <laughs> we can save our broom bickering for later. We need to. We need focus. to find because we wasted an hour. <laughs> yeah, we blew an hour just eating, uh, <laughs> stuffing our face. I mean, I blew two I'm not mad about it, brooms. but I might be mad about it later when we get off this expertio. So yeah, let's. Uh, third floor, anyone? And that was all that was on that floor, right? Um, beyond the great hall itself. Ostensibly, the other rooms there were the kitchens and pantries and the other storerooms, but that room and that level is entirely the Great Hall. It seems okay. there were some other rooms that you didn't open up that were off to the off to the sides. What it was down them, perhaps more to serve the Great Hall or private dining rooms or otherwise. Sebastian, when we get this place up and running again, every night I'm gonna be here for din. Just so you know, open invitation required from the Amethyst Academy. They did not tell me that this was part of the bargain or could be part of the I'll, bargain. <laughs> I'll, I'll see about over it. I'll see about getting one of these, one of them, installed in uh, your clock tower. Oh, like five, five. <laughs> Minimum you only five. need one unseen servant and <laughs> one hero's feast. You'll be okay, right? It can perf- it can it can create enough meals for like six people. Um, as we kind of figure out or which one van. way to go, um, I mean, I think we. What are we looking for first? Are we looking for the staff of power, or are yes. we looking for um, staff of power? The what's the other th- what's the other scrying thing? orbs? If we, if we come across a scrying orb, we'll we'll see what. So about where do you it? think from what we saw in the elevator Library. would be a, a great place to start? Library third Library. floor. Yes. Third floor was the library. Yes. Yeah. 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 Third floor. Let's go up to the third floor. Let's go. We'll work off our meal by going up the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take yeah. the stairs. Um, did any of you happen to take leftovers with you? Did you not put anything in your bag? <laughs> No, I ate. I ate my fill. <laughs> oh, no! I had what was in, like in my hands. I guess I had like a chicken bone, but I assumed you would stuff the bag as I was stuffing my face. I don't mess with magical food, but you—you you probably have a few things on you. Yeah, oh, I always have snacks. On. <laughs> I always have snacks. I may have stuffed a few, you know, broccolis and you know, like carrots and. And you all wanted to take the. You took the west yes. stairs mm. up. Okay, upstairs. So you take the spiral stairs up, and actually, this is where the spiral staircase terminates. So they go up, one, they round up, but then the spiral staircase ends here. Okay. Um, 
and you come onto uh, a. You are now in a long stone hallway. It is of the same construction as before. The kind of this obsidian metal kind of material in in the hallways with a black and white checkerboard floor. And the ceilings are arched up and there are orbs of dancing lights and candles illuminating down the entire hallway. Um, You have arrived right up over here on the board. And the in front of you, the hallway continues down for about 60 feet before veering off into what looks like a T intersection. You can see the the glints of rubble in what might be a statue further down the hallway. And there are three doors uh, that lead out of this hallway here that are on on this hallway. All of them are made of blackened wood and set with metal. Um, and all of them have these large and ostentatious brass handles. Do we just start checking rooms? Yeah, I would. Well, I guess, yeah, like, I mean, ideally this is what we would have done too on the second floor if we didn't get attacked by cutlery. Well, we <laughs> we should, <laughs> um, yeah, look for that orb. Uh, an orb. I go up to the closest door and I press my ear against it to listen up. Okay. Um, give me a perception check. Perception. Or the black dice. No. <laughs> it's, it's wronged me too many times. Uh, 14. It's muffled, but you can hear what sounds like music and speaking coming from the other side. Guys, there might be somebody in this room. Yeah. It's for real? Sure. Check I it out. I hear somebody talking. Shing. Ignatius. Ask Ignatius if there's someone in there. Wouldn't he know? He, he demands the truth. He doesn't know all truth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but we can demand the truth from him. <laughs> yeah. Do you know if there's someone in that room? <laughs> no. <laughs> Tarted it ages. We're what all, are you we're good back for? At square one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to turn it on. Is, is Sebastian lying to me? <laughs> About what? <laughs> but there's a piece of in there. Um, I just want to use Ignatius. <laughs> also, guys, indoor telepathy. Oh, oh yeah. sorry. Sorry, sorry. Um, now they've heard us. We should just, <laughs> just, just if open. there is somebody in that room, we oh. just yelled Ignatius. Open the door. We can always close it again. I always have to yell Ignatius. Uh, it's just part of it. Well, since we've already announced our presence, why don't you just kick down the door and yell Ignatius? Yeah, do that. Uh, I, I'll, yeah, I'll do it again, but more for flair. It's it's on. Like, I'm turning it on, but I'm going to yell it again <laughs> for flair. So I kick the door and I go, Ignatius! Okay, the door flies off of its hinges. <laughs> and you come into a large room that is raked so the the floor of this room is slanted downward towards the opposite end of the room the north end of the the room and in this room are several rows of benches and seats as they as it rakes down and stairs leading down between them beside you as you enter the room is this large throne with, which is an upholstered pillar, and then beside it is this, on the throne itself, is this very strange looking helmet that has a pair of goggles built into it, and all of these crystals coming off of it, and a tube connecting it back to the throne. And then opposite you, <laughs> you can second. see that there, on, on the opposite end um, of the room, there is this large... Um, circular glimmering image and above the throne there is this strange box that has a glowing flame behind it and this mirror on the other end of it and it is going through this tube and the light is a beam that comes and it hits this shimmering field and it's forming an image and you can see that there is in the chair on the helmet there is this dust and remnant and a bit of bone fragments and pieces of a skull and the image itself on the screen is saying so it begins in this very 
elderly sort of voice and there's a little bit of music in this imagery and saying the fundamentals of the physics of magic begin with <laughs> elementary equations math is fun and you'll learn today students how it's done <laughs> Close the door. It's and school. It stops it's and school. It's, and it goes on. And then it kind of clicks and stops. And there's this screeching noise. And then it starts again <laughs> as if it can't quite get through the, the whole thing. It's school. And, sorry, it there's off. dust and bone fragments on the throne. On the, on the throne. Are you as excited to put on that helmet I, as you were moments ago? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm holding the helmet and I look down and see the bones. And I'm like, is anybody going to put this helmet on? Or are we no. putting the No. I, it, it sounds like a bad idea. We already wasted an hour on food. <laughs> yeah, if there's going to be so many more shiny things that we want to toy with if in we here. Have to carry around your you bones for it. in like, your bag. Okay, so I, can I like not put the helmet on, but just like try to look through the goggles a little bit, like kind of hold the helmet and like, you know. You can look, and it looks like there might be some very small needles on the inside of the helmet. <laughs> Oh, this looks like a bad idea. Who? Who? <laughs> what kind of school is this? This is your school. A school this that wants to inject learning to. into your mind. I don't remember a helmet that put things in my. Do I? Slowly close the door on your way out. <laughs> I start to walk down the hallway to the opposite door. Bear's already bailed. <laughs> I'm out. I'm I'm intrigued to the helmet, but I'm also intrigued as to the last user of the helmet, and I have a funny feeling. Pluto, I feel like we have an experiment. Sit on the throne. <laughs> hey, yeah, you serious? Probably not. That's Oscar no. would, would would want you to do it. Well, then I can't do it. Uh, yeah. No, don't sit on the throne. <laughs> okay. Cuz I'll do peer pressure stuff if you guys tell me. I really like you guys. <laughs> We're going to save our peer pressure for other dangerous <laughs> situations. <laughs> Only I had a willing test subject. What about um, like a shadow dog? No. Oh I'm, no, no. No, that's my pet. <laughs> yeah, but animals are used for no animal, <laughs> no animal cruelty. <laughs> no, it's like a shadow I'm dog. I'm sitting there, like, put my hands oh, up, like, really, oh. Pluto? Would you put me in the chair with the needles? I reach into my fuzzy bag. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. And. I pull out. Oh my god! I come back to the room and I'm like, "What are you doing?" We're experimenting. Give us a second. And I you pull out want to see this. an ape, <laughs> which is perfect. As soon as it appears, I put the helmet on it. Okay, there is a, a jolt uh, through the ape, and it it seems fine. And then the image on the screen changes, and it shows. An ape eating a banana. <laughs> no. How does the ape look? I'm. I'm. It looks like the ape, and it. it's it's the ape itself, and, he, and he's kind of like he looks very focused and kind of catatonic, and you see on the screen the this image that is forming of the ape eating a banana and going about its daily life. It's a guy just having fun, but being like the, an ape. the actual ape that's in the chair. I'm testing it's kinda, it. It seems kind of okay. unresponsive. I'm going to call Eldrick on you. <laughs> Why? Because I'm testing. Experimenting on a monkey. <laughs> an ape, sorry. I'm alive, but fine. He's the, fine. The, the footage moves and the, <laughs> the ape then runs into a partner and begins copulating. <laughs> and then there's some defecation and it gets really, really gross really, really oh, fast. No. Okay, I take the helmet off. <laughs> and the ape is fine. Oh, bring the ape with us. We now have an ape. And we, I, come we on, know. guy. And, and the, as you take the helmet off, the image goes dark, and the box overhead that was projecting the image turns off. <gasps> we could totally use this on our enemies to get in their minds. Interrogation. Yeah. Oscar. Oh man. We're if we find him in someone here, someone into that. Yeah. <laughs> Save that for later. Mark it on it. Do we have a map? Are we drawing a map? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to draw a map? I'm gonna wherever I like. Third floor, first room. Interrogation room. <laughs> Got yeah, it. It's now our interrogation room. All right. Okay. That was a successful experiment. That was a. That was a. Yeah, we're we're on board. Come along, monkey. You'll be useful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're gonna put you in so many things. Uh, <laughs> I'm. So, I, I feel so bad. 
I'm um, not like shifty eyeing you. No, no don't name it. <laughs> don't Bubba. Why? Ah. Bubba. Why is that going to just make it harder when <laughs> oh. Bubba? He's like he's like Faye. Don't worry. Like it's like. Like, when, when you Stop pull, trying to justify it. When, when you pull something out of the bag, it just like it it it's not like it's not real, right? Yeah, I mean, from my understanding of magic, which is like one out of a million, <laughs> yeah, it's probably not real because it was in a bag a minute ago. It doesn't make sense. None of this makes sense. Come on, let's go eat more magic food. My trust has gone down a little bit, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Willing, okay, you can roll a d twenty. Oh gosh. 19. 13. 18. Okay. Listen, given the circumstances, we need to figure out what things in this <laughs> tower do, and I'm not going to use uh, one of us to figure that out. Do we need to? I'm pretty sure Eldrick told us not to. Looking around, is there an orb? I guess we could just ask Eldrick, although he didn't know what the... There's orbs of light that illuminate the room, but... But uh, uh, any orbs that stand out from that, like that are not obvious, like... Those appear to be like torchy, like kind of like... No, the, this this room beyond is arrayed much like an auditorium or a theater with all the seating facing towards the glimmering image um, and the throne facing it as, as well. The other set... Of the, you can see that the other door that was down the hallway also led into this room. Hmm. Eldrick, oh, okay. um, we just found a room with a throne, a weird helmet with goggles and a tube and a image on a wall. Does that sound normal? Ah, yes. That's the projector. Well, probably could have asked you before I strapped a monkey into that chair. <laughs> that's horrifying. You should never do that again. The Amethyst Academy does not support animal testing. We use fiends and summoned undead for that. Uh, okay, second question. Uh, when you pull an animal out of a, a bag, is it is it a real animal? You know, Sebastian, magical philosophy really isn't my field. <laughs> I'm just going to let this one go, and we're not going to use the monkey anymore. All I can tell you is that machine that you have found is perfectly safe. It projects the willing thoughts of the wearer onto the image. It's a form of the major image spell, and it's used for instructional purposes so that our higher-level instructors and our higher-level apprentices can see visual aids in the classroom. We're trying to be forward thinking and <laughs> it's the classroom of the future. <laughs> but I'm, today uh, I'm learning so much here. From now on I'm just going to ask you. Uh, yeah, questions. we really kind of roll the dice with some of these uh scenarios. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I don't I don't feel happy about the choices I've made. But. I think my ape was more than willing and uh he is a loyal companion. You did you put choice. And uh I only known him for a few minutes because I pulled him out of a bag. He had a good time. Yeah. And he's going to be very helpful going forward. Uh, okay. Do you want to go to the room across? I listen into this room. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now that we've just kind of announced ourselves, I yell, Ignatius! <laughs> I pull up my sword and I kick the door. <laughs> okay. I mean, it this room is a large workshop. Um, there are several ta uh, clattering tables <laughs> with all a range of metal parts, bits of armor, pieces of wood, and many different tools from saws and drills, and there's every niche in the room has every sort of various tool of construction that would be here. And in the center of the room, there is this large pedestal upon which is a wooden body about 12 feet tall, and pieces of armor look like were being riveted to it to form a creature that resembles the guardian that Eldrick had. Um, and the pieces of it are all disassembled, and there's a, this softly humming machine in the corner of the room that is humming, and there are cables coming from the machine and are connected to the temple of the construct being created and the platform that it is laying on. Guys, my curiosity is killing me in this place. I just want to try What if it everything. attacks? What if it attacks? What if it... What if it wants to defend this place? What if it wants to defend us? Because we're its new master. You well, always go the negative. Yeah, I know, but uh, that... that I, I'm, I'm down with that, that thinking, but in magic world, uh, it sounds like we need to have the staff of power to kind of command some, anything this to this. Like, I'm totally down with that. And I Caution. think that's a totally possible, but... Right now, like, we're not even able to... You can't even cast some of your basic spells without being 
Yeah, they yelled at me when I tried to cast a spell. Yeah, I saw that. I feel like caution over curiosity might yelled, be our best bet right now. Your mom yelled at you. <laughs> <laughs> That's never happened to me in my whole life. <clears throat> Except that one time when we met fake mom. Yeah, and she tried to kill us. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to ask the ape to stand in the hallway and let us know with ape noises uh, if anyone uh, comes or anything weird happens. Okay. So no to touching this machine. Uh, let's just check the rest of the room or the other rooms. Like we, unless there's anything that stands out. Again, we're right. looking for an orb or the staff of power. Right. Orb is crying, staff of power. I yeah. get easily distracted. It's understandable. There's so many cool things in here. It's very <laughs> interesting. This is a well-appointed workshop, and to search through everything here would take some time. Do you want to spend the time looking through it? What about like a no. surface level, just like look at the tops of the tables? Sure, give me a quick investigation check. Yeah, we can't go too deep because we're on a timer, right? And you can each roll a d6, please. Uh, 20. Okay. Looking around, one? this construct is very incomplete. Um, the parts arrayed on the table, actually looking at it, what you're looking at is not a construct that is being built, but one that is being taken apart. Huh. And there are several, and you can see as you look around on the surface, that there are bits of that there are several notebooks screwed across the floor and looking at one of the notebooks it's the student's notes on building a guardian and it seems like the the notes trail off at the end and it looks like they were having a class on how these things are built Hmm. by taking one apart I failed that class is it reminiscent of like the ones we've seen with uh, River and Eldrick like is it look is it in that same sort of design category? Yes, yes, it is very much similar to the constructs that Eldrick and River have with them. So like, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, what did you guys get on your D, on your D six rules? One, six, one. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, all of you can make perception checks with disadvantage. Does my monkey help? Cause, but he's in the hallway, so I, I yeah. don't know in the context. 12. I, I rolled two sevens. Uh, yeah, seven. You said perception? Seven. 12. Uh, uh, 13. Mm-hmm. Okay. So as you uh, are about in the room, I'm going to place yourselves all in the room. Yep. Mm-hmm. Looking around. Oh, thank you. <laughs> as close to the construct as possible. Put him right, right, right up. I'm just hugging him. I'm touching him. <laughs> I'm poking him. I'm definitely keeping my distance. Is this one of the things that River has? <laughs> um, as you look around through the room, 13 was the highest perception? Uh, 13, 13 oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, you look around through the room, and find nothing else other than the notes and the tools and other pieces around here. I just say we head to another room. Yeah, let's get out of here. I start to make my way towards the door. Goodbye. Okay. Uh, let's go down the hallway to there's a there's a split. Yeah, there's a T coming up. You come to this T intersection that leads to the south and then once again to the east. At the intersection, you can immediately see that here is the room where the elevators are. Hmm. And there is a large statue of Archmage Modera, the last Archmage of the Amethyst Academy here in this room. And there are two more door, there are, aside from the elevators, the hallway continues way across to the east and there are two more doors as well. Um, as you come around the corner, uh, you come to this intersection, which way are you gonna go? I have a quick thought, guys. Yeah. yeah. And let me know what you think. Remember your mom's sanctum? Yeah. And putting stuff on statues was like a magic thing? Yeah. And she was once the archmage of this. What if like touching statues is also a here thing? Do you wanna do you wanna put the your cape on <laughs> this statue? Well maybe we could do it to your mom's statue. 
If we find it. Right. But or like, the statue might be replaced every time and there's a new uh, headmaster. Or like even just checking out the statue, like maybe there's some interactivity with it that mages know about. Um, I s- I mean, I'm just throwing that out there because I, I just had that thought. I cautiously, after Pluto suggests it, I kind of look at him. I'm like, oh, okay. And I cautiously <laughs> approach the statue and kind of look up at it. Okay. As you do so, as you come around the corner, there is a low growl and a hiss as the door in front of you bursts open and a creature leaps out at you, Sebastian. Roll for initiative and you are all surprised. What? Ah! You monster! Fifteen. <laughs> Just walking by doors. <laughs> I feel slightly responsible for sending you to this. Sebastian, okay. maybe go check Just out go the alone statue. to that statue. Okay, okay. I was actually okay. going to suggest Sebastian, we go in that room got? next. It's all right. <laughs> what do you got? 15. 9. 21. Okay. Sebastian, the door opens and you get a brief glimpse at the horrifying creature beyond. There are two of them. And as the door pushes open, it actually clips you as if the creature on the other side was lying in wait for for you. Um, and the door batter, batters you open um, and you can see the two creatures beyond are covered in tattered robes of the Amethyst Academy. And as one of them lunges towards you, you can see its face um, has shifted its features. For where its jaw should be has become a massive eyeball. Its nose is on the top of its head, and its eye sockets are just two mouths that are pattering and speaking as if they're trying to mutter the remnants of spells. The creature behind it is similarly emaciated, but its entire face is just eyes all over it. And the two of them burst forward to, uh, towards you. So, Paluto, you are first in the initiative order. You are surprised, but that surprise is now ended. Ne- now, these creatures, the door from the projector room bursts open, oh. and two of them rush forward and leap back. What? And another two come out from the corners of the hallway lying in wait. As they do so, the first two attack Sebastian. It reaches into him with its claws, getting a 15 and a 20 to hit. Um, I cast shield to block one of them. The other one causes uh, six points of damage. The other, with, with all of the eyes, gazes towards you. And as you do so, you can see that there are pieces of delirium crystals growing out of its spine. And this purple light fi- shines out from all of its eyes towards you. Uh, make a constitution saving throw, please. 17. You succeed, but you still take eight points of necrotic damage. Um, as you can see these creatures, their limbs are extended and emaciated and spines of delirium crystal grow out their backs. Mm. These two that have come down the hallways, one, its head is just laying there limply forward and instead this giant eyeball has come out of the top of its head like as if it has no neck its its head is just laying limply around its chest and this giant eye is looking around with a purple iris the one uh, the one beside it 
um, has a completely normal human jaw and face, but just one massive eye that is fused together. The other two like that are of, are of similar dis, uh, appearance. Their skin is emaciated and blackened, and again, the spines of delirium grow out of them. Two rush up behind and both attack Veo. Mm. Veo! One gets a 14 and one gets a 17. One hits. One hits, and the other makes its claw attacks, getting two 17s. Yes. So three hits total as they claw into you, dealing a grand total of eight points, eight points, and four points. So 20 points of damage. The other two that are come down the hallway, the massive eyed creature, it flares with this glow and Pluto, two constitution saving throws. Please. Ooh, baby. Uh... Oh, no. Uh... Nine and nine. Okay, uh, so that now, is going to be 20 points of necrotic damage. Oh, Ooh. ow. As this withering, rotting, delirium-infested gaze rips through your body. Ah! Okay. Um, now, can I turn around, because I've now gained my reaction to swing at one of the ones at yes. Veo? Yes, yeah. Uh, just with Ignatius! <laughs> uh, so I'm going to sentinel attack, getting a... Uh, 20 to hit that hits for um f- uh, 14 regular damage and nine fire damage okay it is bloodied by that attack what bam nice Veo and sebastian are both surprised by these attacks so pluto we go back to you so i i i turn around as i get like <laughs> festered with necrotic energy and i go ape protect Sebastian, because <laughs> Veo is probably fine. <laughs> and, and, uh, the ape is nowhere to be seen. What? Probably not. He's not loyal. <laughs> is it because we strapped him in that chair? <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't be. <laughs> um, uh, I just I take another swing at the one beside me, getting a uh, twenty-two to hit. That is a hit. Twenty-four. Sorry for boom, 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 boom. Um. Oh my God. Twelve fire and sixteen regular. Okay. You slice him in half, <laughs> cauterizing the wound, and the two halves of, of whatever remained of this creature collapse onto the ground with a one last gasp of a wail. Okay. Then, um, is the other ones based with me or still, like, based with both me and Veo? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, I'm gonna swing at it, too. Uh, 20 to hit. That is a hit. For uh, 10 regular and 10 fire damage. Cool. The flashing blade slices through it, carving a deep gash, but it continues to lunge forward as if ignorant of its wounds. And I'm going to use uh, the tripping attack. Okay. So uh, strength save DC. I get uh, a natural one. <laughs> that's perfect. It's going to take an extra two damage. Okay. That and it's it bloodied and it's prone and I'm going to run away from it. Okay. Towards Sebastian. And uh, I mean, I, I guess it can make a yeah with disadvantage throw an attack on me. It, it claws at you as you rush away, but it misses. And I'm just going to run right into Sebastian, like run right beside Sebastian and slam into the closest one with my shield. Okay. To knock it away. Uh, getting a uh, uh, 12 and it gets a 17 oh man <sighs> I rolled really bad okay yep. you block the doorway but it continues to come forward okay okay next up are the apprentices the last one it scurries to its feet and the uh, and these two rush forward oh <laughs> Oh, I'm it's so fine, sorry. It's fine. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Veo, you are attacked by two of them as they um, leap to as the first two leap towards you. The first one lowers its rotting gaze at you. Make a Constitution saving throw. Mm. Thirteen. You succeed, but you still take two points of necrotic damage. The other two. Um, come at you with their claws, ripping into you with their flecks of delirium underneath them. They get into your skin. Getting a uh, 13 and a 17 to hit. 17 hits. 
and a 13 and a 14 to hit. No. Okay. So, wow, you lucked out. Uh, so you take today. five <laughs> points of slashing damage. So these two come come at you and it leaps to your feet, but you're able to elegantly dodge and weave through the attacks, but one claw rakes down yep. through you. On the other hand, these two in the front, um, one attacks at Pluto, getting a 10 and a 13 to hit. Miss. And the other attacks to Bastion, getting a 14 and an 8 to hit. Uh, one of them hits. So I, I imagine there's this doorway and Pluto's trying to block it. And the two of them are just reaching forward with their claws over the shield. Uh, did I hit with the Yeah, booking? one of them scratches yeah. me. Scratches ah. Sebastian for seven points of slashing damage. And I swing elegantly at it cool. uh, for like a 28 to hit. Oh my God. For uh, um, 14 regular damage okay. and eight fire damage. That also leaves it bloodied. So I'm like stabbing through the doorway back at them. Deo, it is your turn. Um, so I'm going to use my bonus action to disengage using my uh, cunning action. Okay. Um, and just to make sure, my first turn, because it was a prize, I can't use my dread ambush or extra attack. Correct. Okay. Correct. Um, so I'm going to then go uh, 30 feet, or at least as far as I can go, turn around and hit this main guy with my longbow. Cool. Up. Uh, twenty four. <laughs> that is a hit. Nice. Na, 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 na. Twenty three damage. Oh. Uh, and that was the one that Pluto had not knocked pro. Okay, so it is bloodied. Cool. And then I take my second shot at it. Uh, thirteen. That is a miss. Ooh. It just reflects off the wall behind it with a thud. I got 25 feet, yeah? Yep. Uh, I'm going to take my other five feet of, and go behind the corner. Okay, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Sebastian, it's your turn. All right. I, um, I swing around to face this group over here, and I am going to... Uh, just try to buy us some time dealing with the two in the doorway. So I'm actually going to use my wand and do a cone of fear kind of like over here. Over my shoulder? Oh, yeah. cool. Okay. So I have to make wisdom saving throws? Uh, yes. Nice. Okay. You just like, as I'm fighting these things to your All left, of them fail. <laughs> you're shooting magic over my right. Awesome. So... Uh, they become frightened of me for one minute. A keening cone of fear terrifies the um, the mutated creatures, and they are. It's just the cone of fear. Does it force them to? While it's frightened in this way, it must spend its turns trying to move as far away from you as it can, and it can't willingly move to a space within thirty feet of you. Okay, it also can't take reactions. Okay, great. Nice. So that should tie them up so we can deal with the two in the doorway, and then we'll worry about the others. They begin howling, at least the ones that have mouths. Yeah. Um, so I, and I crying imagine... crying out in... And just they're just um, spouting gibberish. As as one of them, like, reaches over and claws me, and I kind of swing, like, back to back with Pluto <laughs> and pull out my wand, and I'm like, I'm your nightmare now, and I blast them with... Uh, <laughs> nice. Who's afraid of who? Yep. I'm so oh, scared. Oh, I'm getting scratched. <laughs> okay. And uh, with that, Sebastian's turn is over. We go back to Paluto. And I'm just a swinging away at this doorway. And I get a 17 for uh, 11 regular damage and 4 fire damage. Okay. And that was for the uh, same one. Yep. Uh, it, he's still kicking, oh my though. God. Uh, so then I'm going to use a... Uh, no, yeah, I'm going to keep going. Uh, then I get an 18 to hit it. Oh, brutal. For 10 regular and 5 fire. Not anymore, though. So as you push yes. back into the room, cut, uh, it kind of reaches towards you. And imagine the first attack, you cut off its arm and then follow through and slice across its throat, yeah. beheading it completely. And as it falls to the ground, the eyes land on the ground and just pop. <laughs> and then I slam my shield into the one 
beside it for a, uh, a 15. 15? I get a 13. So I'm going to knock it backwards. Okay. Um, and then I'm, uh, I think I can throw it five feet. You slam it backwards into one of these obsidian desks that is in this lecture, in this classroom, basically. And it slams backward. And, and then I'm going to step into the... No, no. I'm going to... I'm going to kind of... Can I move another character with my movement? Uh, no. Now that you use your actions and bonus actions. No. So then I'm just going to keep myself there because I want to really put myself in the way of this hallway. Yeah. Okay. The hallway, I think, is this is a good position we have. Cool. Uh, we now go to the apprentices. The, these three howl in terror and the the lot of them run. One of them runs back down the stairs here and it runs down the stairs and Uh-oh. the other two <laughs> run back down the other hallway and just pass me the minis and then i can check to see if any of them make saving throws nope nope oh okay yes this is um, just like the gnomes that got away <laughs> so they run they they scramble away almost dropping down onto all fours and scurrying down the hallway as they do oh, so that's so upsetting creepy. that's so creepy i'm upset <laughs> Uh, the other one, though, it pushes itself off the desk, lunges towards Paluto. Hello. And gets a 20 and a 22 to hit. So they both hit. And it basically pushes itself off the desk and jumps at you and basically goes right for your And I'm half paying attention. It's trying to, like, rip off your armor and strangle you as it does so. And you take 10 points of slashing damage. Ah! Get off me. Vale, you're up. Uh, I whip out my crossbow and I take pew, 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 a couple shots at him. Cool. Um, 14? That is a miss. It actually bounces off of Pluto's shoulder armor. Uh, natural <laughs> one and... That one hits me in the back. <laughs> uh, 20. Ah. The 20 hits... As it's coming up around Paluto's shoulder and about to bite him in in the shoulder, it hits him right in the eye. <laughs> yeah. How many and eyes does he have? Like th- this is this is the one that's the two eyes fused together. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And because or this is the one that has the eye for the jaw and, and the uh, the mouth <laughs> oh, eyes. Oh. Yeah. Um, so it's trying to like bite you with these mouth eyes. Ah, get your my, mouth eyes off me. <laughs> I can use my sneak attack because Pluto's right there. Yeah. <sighs> nice. 24 damage. The eyeball on its chin bursts in a, in a spray of <laughs> blood and something indescribably black. No, it's in my mouth. <laughs> Why is it in my mouth? It's all inside my armor. And the, and the creature just slumps over, over Paluto's shoulders. Uh, Guys, I, I gotta just... stay out of the splash, so really <laughs> 10 feet away at all times. Smart, smart hockey. <laughs> Uh, I throw its lifeless body off, uh, off the shield with the shield. Ugh, gross. It's hockey cannon now, too. Baseball. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> baseball hockey. <laughs> <laughs> so many sports in Dragon You can... The only sound that continues down the hallway is, are the reverberating, maddening screams of the fleeing creatures. And you can hear their heavy footsteps resounding down the hall. And we'll never have to worry about them again. <laughs> That's where we're going to take our break. Oh! <laughs> and we are back. We have finished our short rest and are ready to take on the rest of the tower. But before we get into that... <laughs> I want to give a shout out to Tabletop Audio for all the great music that you're hearing. Um, We've been using it since day one. We curate the playlist so that you guys can hear some uh, sounds to really capture the imagination that is Drakenheim. Uh, Check it out, tabletopaudio.com. It's all free. Uh, Use it in your game. And be sure to visit our merch store at the links below for our Teespring store. You can find them below on Twitch or on YouTube. Or if you search for bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch with all your fave t-shirts like Troll Killer, Rat Prince, and of course, Dragon Force. And if you're enjoying the stream and want to help support our work, check out our Patreon. You can find it by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. We also have a phenomenal Discord community uh, exclusively for our patrons. So you can hang out there, discuss Drakenheim stuff with us, D&D stuff, anything stuff, and just <laughs> hang out with all of us and talk about all the nerdy things that we love. 
This week's episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim has been sponsored by our amazing friends at Dimension 20. We're spreading the news that Brennan Lee Mulligan and a team of veteran college humor comedians are back for season three of their D&D live play series, The Unsleeping City. It is a really cool D&D live play. The episodes are so funny and the team there really brings this magical dimension of New York City to life. And I love how they've adapted. It actually surprised me that it was fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons in a modern day New York mm. because they make the characters and their abilities m make sense within that context. I really think it's a creative way to use the rules of D and D in an unexpected way. So you can watch the full series and more by subscribing at dropout.tv. You can also, also follow the links in the description below. If you'd like to save 50% off your subscription with the code roll 50 with that, let's return to the ruins. Woo. So, Screams echo down the hallways of the Amethyst Academy Fine. as the maddened and mutated apprentices flee from the wand of fear. <clears throat> what will you do? Well, that's a problem for future Sebastian. Um, How long does it last? You know... It's a great question. <laughs> like, like, just so we can have maybe a timer. And I, I frantically look around for oh. my ape. Uh, one minute. Oh, okay. Um, so we should probably start hustling through these rooms to see if there's anything here. I say we start to make our way up because the Expergio is going to... Either we need to get to a level that's above the haze um, before we do it, or we might be a bit screwed. Yeah, how is the haze doing in the tower? The haze at these levels is everywhere. And you can even see in the rubble that has collapsed through, there are flecks and fragments of delirium in it. Hmm. Um, it looks like in the rubble that is collected down the shafts, there are pieces of the meteor in that, and there are s several shards and pieces of delirium. So a thin mist does hang through the halls. It is not what the deep haze in the tower, but it is a, it is infused with the haze itself. Would this be on par with what we experienced when we were just wandering the city? Yeah. I guess so at this level we're... Yeah. Because so I'm thinking... We would be ahead. okay to vacate our systems mm -hmm. of... Well, I'm thinking is we should go back down and go to places that we can't go. Because do we have other expo... Expergio? Do we even have any more? <clears throat> like once this wears off, can we be in deep haze this, anymore? This was... The... The area surrounding the tower is in the deep haze, but once you are in the tower itself, the t the tower itself is not covered in deep haze. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, oh. because I was just thinking like if we only have it, we should use it while we can. But now I'm with Veo and like if we're inside, that should let's be fine. Find a corner to well cuddle. <laughs> you have a tiny hut that you can make because I'm sure we could all use a short rest. Yeah. So while I'm trying to get the tiny hut up, that's going to take me about ten minutes. So I need both of you guys to stand guard and make sure those screaming monsters don't come back. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're afraid of us permanently. Um, so you said there are fragments of delirium around here as well? Yeah. in Collected in the elevator shaft mm. where the, the rubble has gone from, you can spy that there are pieces of delirium and parts of the meteoric iron that have come down the rubble and pieces of the building itself. I want to spend while you're doing the 10 minutes. Pluto, do you want to keep guard while yeah. I start to collect some stuff? So I'm going to come over to this uh, fountain over here and start creating a tiny hut. Okay. I'm going to be listening for those screaming apprentices. Okay. Standing on guard. And I'm going to sift or, uh, through the rubble. Ignatius. I'm going to sift through the rubble and see if I can find whatever sure. I can in that time. Uh, you can all roll me a d6. <clears throat> Three. Five. One. Okay. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> A few minutes pass and the screams subside. They stop. Beautiful. I mean, Sebastian, so Sebastian's about halfway through summoning the tiny hut. Guys, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. Keep going with the tiny hut. Okay, I'm going to keep keep summoning this thing. I'm like holding out my mom's spell book and like reading poorly some incantations and trying my best to make this tiny hut appear. Cool. Um, and, and no ape, right? Ape's gone. Wherever that thing went, 
Who knows? Got it, an eight ball. <laughs> it's got an eight ball. <laughs> How many fragments and uh, meteoric ore? Um, the meteoric ore is in large chunks that, that would take a few people to carry out. Um, but you are able to find five uh, shards of delirium. Five shards? Yeah. Shards. We should probably give this to the Amethyst Academy at some point. I've got a decent amount of um, mm. delirium in my bag right now. Um, and the meteoric ores, are they... they um, how physically big are they? They're large chunks ranging the that are the size of like rubble. Oh, so like pretty yeah. big. Okay. So we may have to there come back to There are flexed pieces that you could break off, mm. but it, but you'd need to carry back a lot of it to make anything out of it. Mm. I'm just wondering if getting enough for your bag of holding might be at least a couple pieces. Maybe your dad can make some sort of like, I don't know, knuckles. I'm still reading from the book. I just <laughs> toss you the, um, the, the bag. bag of holding to see. Okay. What you can I take do. what I can. Pluto, what are you doing during this time? I, I'm still on guard. Okay. Give me a perception check. Go, go, go. Ba, ba, ba. Perceive. Uh, a 25. Okay. As Sebastian continues to encant, you can see in the pile of rubble down the down the hall to the east, you see a large eyeball poke up and then duck back underneath the rubble. Veo, Sebastian, there's an eye, there's an eye, let there's him a weird know eye. That, let him know that we know that he's there. We know you're there. I yell into the hallway. I see you. And then I go, yep, yeah, there's definitely an eyeball. Come on out. We just want to talk. <laughs> it's one of the creatures from before. It slowly crawls out and over the rubble towards you very carefully. Um, whatever has happened to this woman has twisted her face beyond all recognition. This is the one where her, the, uh, her eye just fused into a single gigantic eye and the jaw underneath. So you can barely see her face. And as she comes forward, crawling on, on all fours and with her, her robes all, all around her, she tries, she tries to speak. Um, and the only word that comes out is invaders, intruders, Shouldn't be here. Two options. We could kill her. Or we could put her in the machine that projects her brain onto the screen. I think there's more than two options. <laughs> well, I really like that second one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sheath Ignatius. Hmm. As kind of like a... And I want to try to... Like, does it... Although she's saying mean intruder things does it look like she's just going to lunge at me at any moment or is it more of like she a timid... reaches towards you with her her hands and that's when you see um that there are f one of her hands has five rings on it mm. smashing show your rings. i want to take I don't have one one and as she one. she reaches out she's like guardians be here and she looks at you and she looks back in uh, at your face and make a charisma saving throw. Oh. No. Um, uh, two? Two? Well, I guess I can. Oh, could I okay. use and Indomitable? Huh? Cool. Five. Actually, I misspoke. You haven't used Indomitable because it's actually a deception check. Oh. Yeah. Um, so... You, it's a charisma deception check. So unless you're proficient in deception, I am not. Okay. Um, it uh, as you do so. Um, so we're just locking eyes. She she says back to you. Shouldn't be here, Paluto Jackson. Oh, I'm, I'm famous. I'm still reading the book, but I hold up my <laughs> hand with like my mom's ring on it, and I'm like, I'm a ring holder. <laughs> I have coupons. <laughs> she, I'm VIP. VIP. She glances over and she eyes the ring. Yep. And she lets her gaze fall upon Sebastian. And Sebastian, 
you feel like this eye as you're trying to cast the spell is trying to enter your mind. You can make a deception check. 20. Um, cool. I get a 21. <laughs> Uh, with I was, my I I insight so check, okay. uh, actually twenty three. Sorry, um, and do she, I no, do I notice mm -hmm. it happen? Like, do I know that she's in my head? Yeah, um, and you feel this. Um, she's like, she and she says, "You're no student. Expelled, Sebastian. Expelled." I'm being allowed back in. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I'm busy here. You're you're she, distracting me. He's alumni. He's alumni. She, <laughs> she looks over and she tries to pry into your mind again. Twenty-four. She gets a five and says Go away. <laughs> I see. Uh, spell? Is it spell? I can't. I can't. I can't. Do you like tea? I'm approaching. And I'm hearing this? The little thing. How yep. close are we? You're within 20 feet of each other. Okay. She's she's come into the room. Vea, what are you doing during this time? I'm watching her interact with you, and I can hear what she's saying to, to yeah. Sebastian, right? I kind of get disgusted a little bit, like, she she's not right. And I take out my bow, and I go to shoot her. Okay. Like, I'm approaching cautiously like a wild animal. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm like... Are you, you, you going to be overt or, or covert about that? Um, I feel like I would just be very direct about it. Okay. Yeah. Make nice. an attack roll. Nice. Um, 14. Uh, the... Oh, wait. Hold on. Hmm... 15. 15. Yes. Okay. That hits. Oh. Woo. Yes. Trying to make Mats. Um, Get some information. Roll damage. <laughs> and how close are you, is Pluto? Pluto's like, he's only, he's a few feet away you, from you're us. Sure so like I'm exactly slowly sure. like, like a, because he's like close a, enough. Like sneak a, attack would not apply. No. Okay. No. Like a cautious, like a wild animal. Like I'm approaching like, huh? huh? I got my hand up. 19. The bolt lands soundly in her eye and she drops to the ground dead as Pluto approaches. Ask her if she wants tea. <laughs> I don't think she'll be wanting tea. Maybe some biscuits, but uh, I'll take those, actually, if there are biscuits. Um, I'm going to check the body as I, like it dies as I walk I up to it. I still don't know that this has happened. <laughs> she has the tattered robes of the Academy and on her hand are five rings. I take all of the rings. <laughs> it's like a monkey's paw, but with rings. <laughs> I don't know what a monkey's paw is. I take all the rings. I, I notice it's gone quiet, and I, like, glance over, and I'm just like, oh, God! And I say, keep going. One, Make the tiny hut. Two. <laughs> yeah, you you just keep doing your thing. We were three. making friends. Oh, uh, no. She was trying to do some weird mind tricks. Yeah. With the five rings, I'm going to come up to Veo, and while he's cast and show her. You have five rings. The so the other bodies <laughs> one two three all, four along five, the ground five rings. The other bodies of the Nothics, looking at them, they the others have two. One of them has three rings. Hmm. I mean, they're quite skilled. That one's more skilled than Raver. Do I finish casting the? Yeah. I want to quickly Phil? ask Alric something. <laughs> We sure. Could've, we could have asked her questions. We could have gained <laughs> could intel have? as to what happened to her and her people. Mm. I was gonna throw. There's her more in. scaring, scared guys <laughs> running around here. If you really want to capture someone, but yeah, but we were making progress with that one. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I think most people in this building are pretty far gone. <laughs> Strapping a monkey into a chair, bad. Human that's uh, slightly deformed. Slightly deformed. <laughs> yeah, is that murder slightly? on the spot? Mainly deformed. Slightly? Okay, if in this tower my eyes fuse together, you're dying. Are you just gonna shoot? <laughs> you're me? gonna get shot by Vale. Mm, are you gonna try to take over my mind? If you're still sanely yourself, then no. Yeah, I'm taking over your mind right now. You're not taking over my mind. We are sharing. You're thinking about food. Pathic Guys, get off this channel. Get I'm out of ask, my mind. Ask Alric something. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, ask Elric. Elric. Elric, 
I need to ask Alric one thing that I think might come up with the rings. What are... You said something about some doorways or passages are going to be locked by to the apprentice or the thing. What is the key? Is it rings? The... There are many different ways that things will be keyed in the tower. Some rooms will be keyed to their original owners because they will have personally done so. Others may allow access depending on the rank of whoever moves through it. Generally, you, you can expect that any of the private chambers, such as the apartments, will likely be locked with spells. And those spells will only permit those who were living there to enter and exit. Of course, aside from the Archmage. Once you have the Staff of Power, you'll be able to override any such locks. That is the privilege of the Archmage. However, there are certain areas of the, of the tower that are only admitted to those of commensurate rank. Typically, guild mages and guild adepts, those who wear three or five rings, are the only ones, for instance, for instance, you would need to wear five rings to have access to the teleportation and summoning chambers. The those access points would be open to you if you wore five if you wore five rings, but just because you're wearing five rings doesn't mean that they'll recognize you as a member. You would need someone that was alive wearing <laughs> their rings in order to open those doorways. Does my mother's ring count that I'm wearing? It seems like in this case, it, it, it seems like we're fortunate that your ring is con- being considered one that works, even though you have not been formally given it. Perhaps it was meant for you by your mother. In any case, though, it's not as simple as just killing somebody or finding a corpse and putting on their rings. If it was that easy, it would not be a very good security system. You, are, you would need someone who is still alive with their rings. <laughs> we both look at Bayo to <laughs> while we're hearing this. Things. There are more people running around here. It's a shame that we didn't have anybody that was starting to become friendly with us that was wearing <laughs> five rings. Okay, that, that though I will disagree with. Um, she wasn't, or whatever it was, wasn't I've, just coming, becoming I friendly. I think we were it making progress. threatening us. I offered tea. I was waiting for an answer. <laughs> I thought maybe we could sit down and well, talk. Well, it couldn't answer because it was dead by that point after trying to pierce your mind. Do you guys want to go puke in a fountain? <laughs> I kind of want to we go hang out in the tiny hut? Yeah, um, I'll make us some tea. Thank you. So everybody comes into the tiny hut. Okay. And we're going to pee. And we're kind of bickering <laughs> about like killing this thing and like we're just casually like, well, what if it like took over your mind and told you a secret? Oh, what if it knew about my and then like, I think she just, just she deserved some rest. I, I imagine that like when I found out that she was dead, it wasn't like a I was super upset. It was more just like a oh, Theo. <laughs> I just love killing. <laughs> uh, so I made it around the fountain, and so I assume that we're all just okay. going to go f- hang on. The I also picture us too uh, as we're talking. Just one of us just starts throwing up violently <laughs> in the middle of a conversation. Can you like press a digitate like a really bad smell to help us out? Yeah, I can. <clears throat> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, I so mean, you purge I mean, it's in not the terrible. Fountain. Yeah. Ruining the family uh, forever. Ruining the feast that we just all had. <laughs> what are the effects? Um, well, <laughs> all of you need to make um, three constitution saving throws. Oh, God. What's the DC? They're escalating, so you need to make them one at a time. Oh, okay. Hold on. We'll do that. So I'll just do it again. One. Your first ones? <clears throat> 18. 18? 16. 23. You're all good for the first one. Second one. 21. 25. 26. Okay. One more. No. 10. 16. Uh, 24. Vale, you do gain one level of exhaustion Blech. from all the vomiting. The rest of you have purged it all out, and you the resistance to radiant damage is all gone. Interestingly enough, it seems like this fountain has some sort of drain to it because it just carries away all the waste and refuse. Oh, that's actually really nice. Yeah. And I can I kind of like take some yeah. of the nice fresh water to kind yeah. of soothe. <laughs> Is it the yeah. same like arrangement of uh, gargoyles? No, um, this one actually has a different pattern around it. 
and instead of being an arrangement of gargoyles is an arrangement of various essentially it fires jets of water out in different patterns um, that the results of the jets of water as they go up in, in, in the air show the symbols of the different schools of magic. Mm-hmm. I um, I take a scoop of the water and, I rin- and I'm using it to like rinse my mouth out. Mm-hmm. Can you press it to agitate now? Let my mouth taste fine. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do you guys, Ooh. what are the, are there any side effects to drinking aqua delirium on an empty stomach? Um... Uh, mm, I mean, you're this uh, is aqua the potions, delirium, so you, you're the potions um, guy. <laughs> I knock back an aqua delirium. Roll a d4. One. So you gain two levels worth of spells. Ooh. Um. I'm also. Are we? Are we in a short rest after? Yes, yeah, would be a short rest. And remember, the hero's feast spell increases your hit point maximum by fifteen. Mm-hmm. So you can f- you can raise your hit points above if you need to spend a uh, hit dice. Cool. As the tiny hut fades out, what will you do next? I guess we're going to keep exploring. Yeah. Okay. Keep. So you're here on the elevator level uh, in the elevator room. Directly across from you are two doors leading into another large classroom that you only just looked inside. But it was a large class that had several shelves all arranged with all manner of arcane tomes and vials. And there were several books and scrolls on all the tables in front of you. That would be a good place to start. We yeah, also, the, the room that we were just fighting in. And, like, can you think of a place that there might be a, like, when I think of a scrying orb somewhere where I can see other places, I feel like it would be with some sort of, like, head, like a teacher or some sort of, like, like, where would their quarters be? The mm-hmm. thing is, like, this layout is entirely different. Yeah, I know. I keep asking you just more for, like... I mean, yes, it would probably be in, like, a, a teacher's <laughs> quarters, but where the teacher's quarters are, or where, like, maybe they keep one on this level, just, like, in a special room. We could, mm-hmm. like, just quick check the rooms. Yeah, let's do it. I'm yeah. sure it's, like, obvious that it's there, right? I would... I would I would think that a scrying orb would be pretty obvious. I want it to be. Um, do you guys want to just do, like, a quick glance around this room? Yeah, yeah let's go. Yeah. Okay, we do, like, a surface level. Cool. Uh, make an investigation check. Uh, 10 um, <laughs> the scrolls and spell books that are on these desks are real and functional scrolls and spell books um, they are several um, several of them are spell books <laughs> containing various wizard spells upwards of third and fourth level um, and there are um Several spell scrolls in here as well. Um, More scrolls that I'll add to my pile <laughs> of scrolls that I've never used. <laughs> How many oh scrolls do you have? You have so uh, many. Sebastian, you can roll a d6. One. <laughs> okay, so there are two spell scrolls uh, that you can find. Several of the other ones are uh, in terrible condition. Um, and roll me a d20 and a d12. The D20 gets a 10. Mm -hmm. And the D12 gets a 10. Okay. You find a spell scroll of Cone of Cold and a spell scroll of Lightning Bolt. Wow. I have two Lightning Bolts. You should really start using these. Yeah, those are are going to come in handy, I think. (laughs) You have two of those now. Yeah, I found one like a month ago. I've just been holding on to it in case there's a good opportunity for a lightning bolt. Just instead of spell swaps, though, right? <laughs> that makes so much sense. I never thought of using the scrolls instead of a spell. <laughs> it's just Sebastian, like this is why you should die have stayed with like in a school. thousand consumable things. It's like you. 
<laughs> Stay in school, kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> learn to use the resources that you find yeah, in your local It's going to be frustrating library. when you're at the test and you didn't do any studying. I also have potions that I've never used. <laughs> I feel like um, that moment is one of those moments of where it's like, you're studying for an exam and you're really stressed out about it and your friend's like you do remember that you're allowed to bring a cheat sheet in the exam and you're like what <laughs> frantically filling Guys, I have a potion sheet. of water breathing in here yep <laughs> wow don't use it now don't use it now okay um beyond that there is a large lectern with uh a book that contains spells up upward sorcerer and wizard spells upwards of uh fourth level written in it and also a very very dry lecture on the history of the dispel magic spell for the I spell book it. oh do you <laughs> the, does the spell book have any obvious sort of inscription for an owner um it uh it does the spell book was is open and there's a little bit of dust and ash around it um several of the pages of it are also torn out um by like clawed hands and the uh the owner of the spell book seems to have been a guild adept who was teaching here that wore um and her name was I'm reading up on my scrolls. Um, her name was uh, Larissa, um, and she was a guild adept of the Amethyst Academy, and apparently a, a pr- one of their um, praetors, which are one of the teachers of the at the academy. And um, do we know any of the rankings, like how many rings an adept would wear? Um, that would be a question for Eldrick. <laughs> Eldrick! <laughs> What's up? It's your homie, Pluto. Um, quick question. What's the ranking system with rings and uh, mages? So, in the academy, your capacity, your rings and your rank are roughly correspond. Um, the academy would allow mage adepts and masters to teach courses. A master is anyone that wears five rings. Is considered a master in the Amethyst Academy. Okay. Um, and the rank of Grand Master is, is, and membership on the council is granted to those who wear seven rings. And the rank of Archmage is bestowed upon anyone capable of wearing nine rings. So what does that make your mom? My mom wore ten rings. She did. I mean, I guess you could you could wear more rings, right? Senior arch. Like it's okay to wear. Is that higher, right? <laughs> Senior. There, in Senior? the history of this world, Super. Sebastian, there have been spells of great and epic, and terrible power. To those that master them, they are granted the rank of prime. Prime. And wow. rib, prime rib. Thus. They are not. They do stand amongst the highest esteem within the Amethyst Academy. Hmm. And someday I could wear ten rings. Oh. <laughs> Did I say that? Did I think that out loud? And then everything will burn. <laughs> Those who wear five rings are acknowledged as oh. masters of the Academy and typically are our instructors and preceptors. So master the... This master preceptor here would have been one of our lecturers and teachers. Not all masters are preceptors. They don't all teach. And you said that Sebastian was at fifth level, correct? Sebastian has demonstrated the craft with magic commensurate with the rank of master. Wow, you know, like a master Sebastian. I mean, master Sebastian. (laughs) That's right. Yes. You want want some rings? Typically, (laughs) however... One would be expected to be a member in good standing for approximately 10 years before they were granted that rank. Aww. Unless... Can we, ex- ex- can we expedite this? You can't see me, but I'm winking, Eld- Eldrick. <laughs> it's like one of those um, granted are you, diplomas. Are you putting on those rings? 
He mimed it. <laughs> he mimed it. I, I definitely put those rings on. Okay, they start burning your flesh. Uh, How no. many rings did you put on? Uh, <laughs> did they burn right away? Yeah, did they, like when yeah, I put the first that? one when you, on. When you put the first fir- first one on. Yeah, I want those or rings and like, I put the first one on. <laughs> yeah. Ah, it burns. This is just part of the process. <laughs> I uh, want this take, so bad. Uh, eight points of fire damage. <laughs> Sebastian, those rings look really nice on you. I, I take the ring off and I throw it. I'm like, don't give me your stupid rings, Pluto. <laughs> look. <gasps> we should sell them to fine. someone. You're gonna be fine. <sighs> I mean, no, don't sell them to anyone. Just leave them here. I'll hold on to them for now. Okay. Just in case you want to burn anyone. <laughs> here, I got you this ring. I found. <laughs> We'll save them for the Queen of Thieves. Okay, so we've learned a lot about how the you just can't wear other one other mages' rings. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, apparently. Mm-hmm. Well, you can. You just have to fight through it. He's got to be tough. Like I wonder me. if I wore it long enough, if the burning would stop, and then I would absorb the power of the ring. Mm, Do you, no. Here, try this ring on. No. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> no. Do you guys want to keep exploring? Yep. Let's uh, hustle through these rooms. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, I say we go east. The rubble east. and the way the thing came from. Do you want to go that east way? East of the east. Like sure. Down the hallway, back up and down. To the east. Oh, I meant like way? yeah, because it, it, we saw it like around here. Yeah. Over the rubble. Okay. We'll co- kind of go that way. Sure. Take a turn before we, you know, go up anywhere. So, um. Looking for more doors. Yeah, going further okay. down past the rubble. As you head to the east, the hallway breaks again Grasses. to in three directions. One to the north that then curves around to another doored room. And then it heads to the south where it breaks off into two smaller doors. And then it, it also continues to the east again where you can see the stairs going down and another doorway. Hmm. So there are the stairs, the door beside the stairs, the two doors to the south, as well as the passage that continues to the south, and to the north, there is another hallway with a door at the end of it. Lots of potential here. Um, I say we hit up this door to the north. Yeah, just to close off this corner. Yeah, to finish that up. So they don't have to backtrack. Like this guy? Yeah. I pull out my sword. I... I let Speak you go first. the word Ignatius and I <laughs> kick the door down. Okay. <laughs> you kick the door down um, and before you is a large chamber about 40 feet by 40 feet and there is a long table enough to seat about eight people here and there is a pile of scrolls and books and the whole room is covered in several large sacks of bookshelves but most notably there are several boards here that are made of a white shiny material that are put up against the walls and there are mathematical and arcane formulas written in them and there are several sticks with multicolored ends on them. They look like wands that are all scattered about the floor by these boards. I walk into the room and I pick up one of these wands. Mm -hmm. And I start trying to use it to channel magic. Um, And as you point it out, a burst of energy comes out of it and goes towards the board on the wall and the word magic, (laughs) channel magic, appears on the wall. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> in what looks like your own handwriting. <laughs> I, mean, I want to try. I go up to one of the other ones. Kay. And I take it and I write, Bayo is the coolest. <laughs> and it appears on the board. With a, I want to do it. With the most crude drawing of a cat with a smiley face and sunglasses. And I pick up a <laughs> wand. <laughs> and I... Goggles. I put away... Ignatius and I pull out one and I point it at the thing and I think oh <laughs> and the word oh appears <laughs> I, Did it, you it's cast like a, a spell. Black, it's like a question mark <laughs> you cast a spell <gasps> <Pluto. gasps> 
I keep it. <laughs> now you are the mage that you have sworn to kill. <laughs> I just, no. <laughs> I'm going to keep this one. There is another door leading in that, that is broken open, leading into another room adjacent to this, which is a very well-appointed alchemical lab. And in, in the room are shelves and shelves of vials and bottles and several other jars that have preserved organs, hands, and several preserved heads all stacked up and labeled. Um, as well as a large cauldron of burning fire and smoke still burning in this room and this chemical smell flows through the room from it. Question. Do you think those pickled organs taste like... No. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to stop you right there. (laughs) No, I don't. (laughs) They're used for alchemical supplies for spells. They're not for eating. (laughs) All right. Um, I start rummaging through the vials, <laughs> looking for any rare ingredients that I might. And I keep an eye on Veo so she doesn't eat any of the ingredients. I, I was just, I was just pondering. I was gonna eat. I'm just thinking out loud. Uh, there is I a lot of your really on a, awesome stuff in here. Like you find, <laughs> you're totally gonna. Eat. Um, you're totally gonna. You eat find them. phosphorus. You find rare chalks that would be used for various, uh, various spells. You find um, several samples of cockatrice eggs and uh, snake eyes. Um, you find a tuft of quagoth fur with pieces of amber and silver pins. Um, crushed black pearl. There's just... It's, it's actually so much of everything here. There's creepy stuff as well. Like, there's vials of... What is... There are vials, and you turn around the label, and it says, Human blood. <laughs> And there's another preserved vial that just has like what looks like strips of leather, and it says, uh, "Flesh of a child." Um, and yeah, the, another, which is a, a pouch of of dust, and it's it says, "Elf bone dust." Oh boy, <laughs> um, Eldrick, wh- where do you get your supplies for the alchem? Like, is that? Mm, I, <laughs> Are these? Is this the type of question you want to answer? Is the children <laughs> flesh imported, or do you do you manufacture it here in the tower? And do you think the pickled organs <laughs> taste like? <laughs> Just a side note: Do you think the pickled organs? <laughs> we rely on many providers to get some of our more rare and esoteric spell components and, and ingredients. Not all of whom are friendly people. Seemingly. <clears throat> well, There's that's also concerning. a bunch of squid tentacles. Yeah, that's normal. I eat those. Do you think those taste like uh, <laughs> fried in pan? Like tasty? I think they would be. I'm okay with you eating the squid. I'm not okay with you eating the baby flesh. The, the baby flesh. <laughs> there are several jars of ointment. Um, made from mushroom powder, saffron, and troll fat. Um, could use that. Yeah, there's you could cook so with it. yeah. All, all in all, um, the number of components for for spells in here, you could probably find the components for almost any spell, even many of the ones with expensive components in this room. And as we look for orbs, do I do I need anything for my um, contact other plane spell? Um. The mater- you could find materials for that in, in here. Uh, I don't think it requires any specific costly materials, but you can check the spell specifically to d- determine that. You could definitely find them in here if they're needed. And yeah, just surface level, any orbs, any orbs sitting on like podiums or... The only noticeable thing is that this the, the cauldron in this room that ha- that is burning over and smoking is actually affixed to the floor. Hmm. And is it obviously like on fire? Like is there a fire underneath it or is it just on its own? It's there's no fire underneath it. Whatever is heating it is the cauldron itself. Okay. Um, I grab a few rare supplies throw them in my bag. Can you get a sample of what's in the cauldron? I, are there like tongs anywhere? Yeah. I take some tongs and I take a vial. Take a few, I, take a few. Just I dip it into the cauldron. Mm. Make an arcana check. 
14. It looks like this... The components in here... It looks like someone is trying to bottle a conjure elemental spell. But you might need a few more... But it just needs a few last components to finish it. Can I, like, using my arcana, can I tell what ingredients it needs? It needs some phosphorus and some gemstones. Make an arcana check and you can try and see if you, if you can get enough. 17. You drop the components in. And there's a burst of energy. You might have put a little bit too much phosphorus in there. Make one more arcana check to see if you can stabilize it. 17. Okay. You pour some a few more components in. <laughs> I'm going to step back with the shield, <laughs> pull out my sword. <laughs> okay. And there is a blast of hot air that erupts through the room, dealing... 10 points of fire damage to you, Sebastian. Oh. <laughs> and after the concoction cools and there is a glowing red gem in the middle of it. Uh, so I'm like all singed and like my, my <laughs> face, like I lift my goggles off and I have that like very distinguished yes, like circles yes. right here. And I just like hold up the gem and I'm like, is it hot? Guys, I think yeah, I it's, it's, it's very hot. Oh. <laughs> Guys, I finally passed alchemy class. Did you? Did, did you? <laughs> That's a pass? Like it. That's like a B. It's a C or a B. B, B plus, I didn't see baby. anybody else in this cool. room make a gem. You can break this gem to summon a fire element. Oh. That you... Why are you getting more fire? Yeah, we're giving you so much stuff, too. You've got to start using Now all of stuff. you can roll a d6. Ooh. Oh, this is the fun part. Three. Four. Two. Okay. All right. I say we move on. Yep. So we've we've uh, we've conquered alchemy. We've conquered alchemy basics. There's another class. Some like Divi- history. Divination. <laughs> history of divination. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> boring. I fell asleep in that class. <laughs> Bayo killed a master. <laughs> we took her rings. Oops. Moving on. All right. Uh, <laughs> I say we go down the hall. And we take on the first door that we see on the right. This is an immaculate room that is filled with stacks of paper. And there is a very curious thing in it. Um, There is a large table and the top of the table is made of glass. And above the table is then it's open like a chest there's a piece of glass and a piece of metal and you can close the table like a chest and underneath the table is a stack of paper and this little cage that has a homunculus in it with a pen and an easel what's a homunculus i just want to point out that small creature made of clay oh that of of all the things we've found in this place, like I think putting the ape in the the <laughs> the, the helmet thing was like by far the least invasive. Like they do some horrible stuff here. I just yeah. want to point out. I mean, I learned. I look around and I see if there's any orbs in the room. There are not. Mm-hmm. Can I t- like? There's this little creature in this cage with mm-hmm. a writing pen. Yeah. Hello. What's your name? It asks you, do you have a copy code? <laughs> Four. Make a deception check. <laughs> 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 <All right. laughs> 21. Place your document on the glass. I like, do you I grab one of the scroll, sheets scroll, of paper. Scroll, scroll, or scroll. Does that work? Is um, that, is that a thing I grab a scroll. I have a scroll of mage armor. I grab that and I hand it over. It looks at it and says, 
I can only copy mundane documents. Oh, um, oh bummer. Wait, I, I if I put... Out. What if I uh, sit on the table? <laughs> <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> Veo sits on the table in the homunculus and a projection appears down on the easel in front of the homunculus and it draws a rendering of Veo's butt. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm into this. <laughs> this I is where food it, comes like, out. Yes. <laughs> I put it in my bag. <laughs> you guys are having way too much fun. I like pull, like as you're doing that, I pull out my mom's spell book and I'm like, I could make copies. And then I look up and you're doing this. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh. Maybe copy your diary or something important. Okay. It's not important. Don't worry. Well, now we know the copy code is full. <laughs> so we got that going for us. Uh, four. <laughs> Uh, all right, and I, I uh, walk no out. No orbs. Room. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, to the hallway or to the door that's right beside. What do you think? Bye, little buddy. <laughs> Everybody Wait, else is leaving. We could take. What, you want to take him with you? Do you want to come with us? I have a job to do. When was the last time you worked? Thirty Just seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> Remember what happened Too with the shit. brooms when we stopped them from doing their work? It's very busy. He, it, business just picked up. <laughs> It's true. Uh, okay. It's have have fun. We'll be back. We'll see you soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, Do we try this uh, room to the... To the left or to the right? What does your stomach tell you, mm. butt copy veil? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the door to the right is fairly close. <clears throat> okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Before the stairs? Uh... No, that's... No, like, yeah. The next room contains um, what looks to be oh. um, another strange device. Um, and you can surmise, this device is a printing press. Oh. Uh, are, are there anything... What was, like... Can I find out what the last thing yeah, printing like, was? Yeah, does it have, like, the mm. imprint or, like, the... Um, yeah, it was printing a very dull text um, about the manifold manifestations of the mage armor spell throughout history. I'll leave it. And I, ha- I hated those <laughs> history classes. Why learn about where magic came from? I just want to learn how to cast it. Anyway. This is a pretty boring room. Not nearly as exciting as the copy gnome. <laughs> to the left, then. Uh, and I go to the room to the left, and I open the door. Okay. You can all roll a d6. One. Five. One. Oh, no. <laughs> you open... As you go to open Ignatius, this, and this I kick door, it, I kick it. <laughs> the a series of runes flare on the door, and there is a keening wail that sounds outwards. Uh oh! As a beam of magic fires from the doorway towards each of you, and you can each make a wisdom saving throw. With advantage. Uh, With advantage? Because we have that thing from the Great Feast, right? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, so I get regular because I'm I'm um, exhausted, right? Oh, that was a terrible advantage roll. Uh, the exhaustion only applies to ability checks, not saving oh, throws. Okay. Um, wisdom saving throw. 15. 15? 13. 13? 13? 5. Five. I peer at the door. I'm like, what's the? What are those runes on that door? <laughs> oh, sorry. Fifteen. Thirteen. Five. Thirteen. Okay. These two are turned into chickens. <laughs> <laughs> um. <Whoop-a-ka. laughs> Was it Wapaka? Wapaka. Wapaka. Uh, with just a poof of feathers as they are both turned into chickens and a booming voice says apprentices are not permitted in the scrying chamber I try to yell back but I just you have the brain of a chicken right now (laughs) um I take out some snacks and I'm like here here, here," and I put some like snacks on the ground (laughs) 
<laughs> Definitely. Like, well, I don't really know. Uh, Eldrick, <laughs> we have a problem. <laughs> oh, can I still communicate? The, the doors open, um, though, and you can s- <clears throat> see that there is this singular room um, has a large pedestal upon which is built a large glowing crystal ball. Cool, Edric. Uh, I have an issue to bring up because uh, you didn't tell us that we weren't allowed to be in the scrying room, and now I have two uh, chickens as my comrades. Whoopaka! <laughs> I can hear. They're still telepathically <laughs> bound to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Feed. Did you trigger an alarm? Uh, No, we just literally walked into the room and uh, it uh, buzzed my two friends into poultry. So uh, if you don't want me to eat them, you might as well just tell me how I can turn them back. (laughs) Do you know any magic for dis... Do you know anything, any way to dispel magic? Nope. Well, then the only other way is to give them a swift kick. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay, two seconds, two seconds. I'll be on hold. (laughs) And I wind up. (laughs) Okay, was that necessary? (laughs) And I boot one. As you wind up, Uh you hear a clunking noise coming down the hallway. (laughs) That's not me, Veo. It's coming from which way? The from the hallway that you haven't gone down yet. And it's coming towards me. Yep. I you, okay. You you hear this clunking noise, and then at the same time, there's this sound that sounds like rushing water I, coming from oh my God. the elevator area. The elevator? Yeah. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Um, I grab these two by the necks. <laughs> um, oh. And I feel an agility down the stairs. <laughs> okay. You rush towards the stairs and you slam into an invisible wall of force. Oh! <laughs> um... <laughs> Roll for initiative. <laughs> Do I roll? What's the stats for a chicken? <laughs> oh. um, as a chicken, what's my dex? Question, uh, does running into the wall of force turn them back into regular people? It, do, it does not. Uh, just assume your dexterity <laughs> is minus one. Okay. And second note, do I get the advantage of the sentinel shield? I would assume no. That was not fun. Uh, oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah, I don't need to be a human anymore. I'm a chicken. It's just you, Veo. You and a couple of chickens. Okay. Squeeze hard. Squeeze hard around the neck. Listen, you nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> Better turn back now, or else I will turn you into my dinner. Like, even if you try to eat one of us, it actually might help. Oh, I mean... Take a big bite. A okay. Big old... <laughs> Bayo, what do you got? 26. 26. Pluto? 16. 16. And Sebastian? 8. 8. Okay. All right, Veo, it is your turn. What are you going to do? Do I know how much damage I have to do to these guys? They only have one hit point as chickens. But any damage that you deal with them will carry over. I smack them together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to call that an improvised attack. Uh, it, it does... Uh, each of them takes D6 points of damage. So both of you take six points of damage. Uh, and are unchickened. Ow, max damage. <laughs> Wait, so we take... Uh, one is a chicken and five is a yeah as a Pluto. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sick. Bear, what happened? Well, you turned into chickens, and Eldrick said I had to smash you in order to turn you back. Did and there's water rushing, and there's clunking coming from that way. So I panicked and I ran into this wall. Caw-caw! I mean, <laughs> <coughs> sorry. <clears throat> Why do I have feed in my mouth? I have like chicken like feed. <laughs> I fed you. <laughs> oh, thank you. You were well nourished under my care. All right. So that was your action. What are you going to do with the rest of your turn? 
Mm-hmm. I am going to um, stay put and ready, kind of just my body watching for what's coming. Okay. Because I can't run anywhere else <laughs> without Ludo. being turned into a chicken. <laughs> You're up. I <clears throat> dust myself off, acting like I wasn't just a chicken. So I try to kind of gain my composure. I pull out Ignatius. Ignatius! And then I uh, walk towards the T okay. in the section, and I want to look down each hallway. You see... To justify what As you come down the hallway, you coming. see an armored figure identical in construction to River's Guardian. <clears throat> He's wearing golden plate armor and bears a flaming sword and a massive shield engraved with a with a very stern and frowning looking face. And it has like that kind of gorget style helmet. And as you peer down the other hallway, you can see the rushing water from the fountain coming up into a swirling amorphous form of a creature roiling down the hallway towards you. I drank from that fountain. Oh, we defiled it. Oh, it's probably mad. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, we got company. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, <laughs> um, and there's a wall behind me. <laughs> uh, I'm up against the wall here, Pluto. I'm going to take one step back. And the first thing that walks around the corner, I'm just going to swing my sword at it. Okay. So I want to be sort of <laughs> hidden, like, into this hallway. So they, like the armored figure that I literally just made eye contact with. Yeah. Stepping back one, and I'm, like, getting ready. Okay. The helmed horror lifts off the ground and flies That's not towards weird. you. <laughs> and in a spinning cut... Makes two attacks with its long sword. Ah! <laughs> well, what about you? Just prepared an action, didn't you? I, know, I was so ready, and now I'm not ready. <laughs> Your ready action does occur, but like I'm not ready. <laughs> it gets an eleven and an eight to hit, and I swing back at it. Cool. With fire sword, I yell, "Ignatius, save me!" A uh, sixteen to hit. Plus, oh, I'm gonna do a uh, precision strike to get a twenty-four. Uh, a 24 to hit? Yeah. Okay, that is a hit. That's what I want to make. And then it's going to be uh, 10 points of regular damage and 7 fire. Okay. Ignatius clangs into the creature's armor, and it leaves a deep rent, and you can see that there's nothing but swirling arcane energy inside the plate armor. Uh, this is just all energy, and there's water coming. Cool. Next up uh, is Sebastian. Um... I don't know what these things are capable of yet, so until they start hurting us, I'm just gonna I, I'm just gonna blast it with a firebolt. I see the thing spin around the corner flying. Cool. Go for and it. And I blast it uh 18. It raises its shield and blocks it. Well, that was bad. <laughs> now I know what they're made of. <laughs> Blocking material, apparently. <laughs> uh, I know exactly what I, you're made of. I run. <clears throat> you said that this door was open. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I do that. I see it just bounce off his armor, and I, I dive into the room. Okay. The water elemental rushes down the hallway like flowing water, and it moves right up to Pluto, and that's its entire turn. Hello. <laughs> so it's just this hulking yeah. water. It's like this crashing wave coming down the hallway towards you. Ignatius. <laughs> we go to the top of the round with Veo. Uh, I take out my crossbow and I take some shots at... Uh, I'm going to go with the water elemental, but I'm going to use... Magic arrows. Smart. Uh, okay. Ten. The arrow just bloop. <laughs> hits the <laughs> hit, hits the elemental, but it just doesn't even splash. Twenty-one. 
that that does something to it. <laughs> Very hard to explain what it might be. <laughs> <laughs> and Pluto, you're based with it. Oh yeah, we're what we're friends now. Uh, my my crossbow with a magic arrow. Do you have magic bolts? Oh no, I don't. Okay, okay. so not magic. Okay, regular bolts. <laughs> okay, um, but I can use sneak attack. Yes. Ooh, I need more D6s. Yes, yes. 24 damage. Ouch. It looks like though, with its amorphous body and its watery form, the non-magical bolts don't harm it as, mu- as much as they could. Mm. I still take the same. Um... I now turn then to the other floating cool. scary guy. Uh, eleven. It, he deflects it as well with his shield. Oh, uh, and I go into the same room as Sebastian. Okay, <laughs> bye, friend. I'm like, hopefully, I don't turn into a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> um. I don't turn around, <laughs> so I have no idea. Pluto, it is your turn. <laughs> and I just keep on swinging. Now, uh, prioritize target. Pluto would naturally fight fire versus water. So I'm going to keep swinging at Buddy. I'm going to get a... Oh, see, I know what misses now. So I'm going to use Precision Strike again to get a... Like a 26. That Against time. the elemental or the helmet? Uh, the helmet. Uh, the helmet horror. Okay. 26 to hit. That is a hit. For uh, 15 regular damage and 5 fire damage. Cool. You crash in and the front part of its breastplate bursts away. um, And it kind of like pulls it back into arcane alignment around it. It is not bloodied because it doesn't bleed, but it is effectively bloodied. And I'm going to swing at it again for a 25 to hit. Also a hit for uh, 15 regular damage and six fire damage. Cool. And then I'm going to use a my bonus action to, oh, uh, I don't know. I'm just going to stand there. Okay. <laughs> I guess I, I got nothing. I might, I'm just going to post up. I'm fighting these things. All right. The Helmed Horror makes its attacks against you, carving into you with its sword. Getting a 19 and a 7. Miss, miss. Okay. Both deflected off your shield. The clang of shield against shield. I'm going to use one of my reactions okay. to uh, repost. Cool. And get a uh, 22 to hit. That hits. for. Oh, yeah, he's going to get wrecked. Uh, <laughs> 22 regular damage and 8 fire damage. As his sword comes down, you slam back into his, his arm, and it just collapses into flying armor and plate, and the arcane spirit binding it just goes... <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> and it freaks me out so much, because, oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, no, I don't need that. I'm really sorry about your spirit thing. I'm real goog. Cool. Sebastian, you're up. Um, I run out of the room and I wrap my arms around Pluto and I thunder step back into the room. Okay. The elemental has to make a constitution saving throw? Yes. Okay. 17. It fails. Gracias. Woo! So that is going to So be... I get the hug from behind yeah. and then I <laughs> Yeah, it's just the hands come around. Feel the hands grab you, and you just hear, Mm -hmm. and there's a big explosion. I'm gonna use a point, a sorcery point, to re-roll two of those. Where in the room are you? Because remember, you have to end up somewhere where you can still see with Thunderstep. Okay, then back there. Okay, good call. Uh, that's going to be 19 damage. 19 damage? Nice. Very nice. Okay. The water elemental flows into the room 
and flows over top of Veo and Paluto. <laughs> Entering your spaces. The two of you need to make strength saving throws. Oh, goodness. Ah. (sighs) 23. 23? I'm not strong at all. Uh, I got a 16. You both succeed. Okay. So, um, you are both pushed forward in front of the elemental. Then, uh, because it tried to flow over you and engulf you. Oh! You were both pushed out of it. So, like a Uh, wave, just getting... uh, On on the front, in the room, not out of the room, though. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. As it tried to whelm you both. Whelm. Excuse Excuse you? We go to the top with Veo. Um, I'm going to use my, uh, cunning action to disengage from it, move across the room to a corner. And I'm going to use my mm. magic longbow to take some shots. Okay. <laughs> 14. That is a hit. Oh my gosh. Woo. Uh, great. Cool. Cool. And I can use my sneak attack. Yeah, you Ooh. should be sneak attackable. Yes. 27 damage. There it is. That's- Oh, I forgot you're getting crawly. And then the yeah. <laughs> second one. Uh, also a hit. Yeah. Also a hit. That one just takes 20 damage. Oh, it is muddied? <laughs> is that what happens to a water elemental when they're, when it's, they're it's, muddied? They're uh, muddied? Uh, muddied yeah, waters? Yeah, muddy, yeah, <laughs> yes. or, yeah. Yeah, muddied <laughs> waters? <laughs> cool. Uh, great round, Veo. Uh, Pluto, we're over to you. Um, uh, being whooshed out, I just stand up. Is Ignatius still lit? Yep. With the fires of the sacred flame. Uh, <laughs> Fire against water? Will Nin- it work? 19 to Turns hit? To that is a hit. For, uh, f- 14. Sorry. I, uh, yeah, it's plus nine. So. 14 regular damage and four fire damage. Your blade crashes down into the water elemental and the the heat is so hot it turns the elemental to steam, yes. boiling it as, as it cuts into it. So how much damage was that? Uh, 14 regular and four fire. Okay. And then I come down again with a uh, 20 something to hit. Also a hit. For... 12 regular damage and 3 fire damage, but I want to use Distracting Strike on it, which I think, and then for another 8 regular damage. It is distracted to death. Oh, yes, perfect. <laughs> as, the, as, the, as you twist the blade at the last moment to deflect it, you catch it in the essence, in its quintessent core, and the whole thing just... It's like there's a membrane and it just collapses and just water crashes out everywhere. All on the, the floor. And the floor collapses all over the floor. Yep. Leaving <sighs> you all soaked. I'm so and unhappy. I use the heat of Ignatius to warm us. Uh, I actually create a small campfire. Oh, that's <laughs> even better. Using <laughs> prestidigitation <laughs> to uh, warm us up a little bit. dry yourself. Could you like blow dryer with mm. um, <laughs> I can I consider that an acceptable I can do usage. puff of wind yeah puff, puff. thank you thank you you're yeah. welcome cool. oh, that's nice I have that nice blown back look on my hair now my fur is just like <laughs> like I'm a, I'm a big poofy fur ball right now because I didn't condition properly after this so oh. that's why I don't like baths the helmed horror is it does it like does the armor anything that shield um, the essence of the creature is what the essence inside is what makes it magical. Okay. Mm. It is immaculately built full plate armor at shield and sword, but destroyed and discombobulated. The, they're no longer magical. Okay. Well, we have an orb here. <laughs> if we're not allowed to touch it or else you turn into, you know, no, that was the door. Oh, the door turned us into chickens and the rings burn you. And everything hates us here. Orb, show me the basement level. <laughs> Use the magic hand again. <laughs> I, I put my mage hand on the orb. 
Nice. And when you place your hand on the orb, <laughs> you feel in your mind that you could cast the arcane eye spell from this orb once today. So you can send out an arcane eye and it will go out into the halls of the academy. All the halls? It, it creates an arcane eye as the spell. Mm-hmm. So he then can control it mm-hmm. with, the, with the only caveat that the arcane eye cannot pass through walls, but it can pass through the doors of the academy. Interesting. Hmm. Should I do it? Where do you want to go? I mean, I can arcane eye this whole place. Literally, spend some moments just looking at if giving you guys it a once can over. Secu- if you guys can secure this room, just make sure nothing else gets messed up. I can uh, do some navigation. Yeah. I'm going to close the door and begin to barricade it with anything in the room, including myself. And okay. I, I sit with my mage hand on the orb and I concentrate on arcane eye. All right. And that is where we're going to end for tonight. Ah. Cool. Oh, nice. This nice. this place is like a... It's like a... Oh, what's, it, what's the thing at carnivals? A fun house? A fun yeah, house. like it's like a fun house. <laughs> yes. Good job. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Great, great time. Good to be back once again. And yeah. thank you to everyone for watching, as always. Um, thank, uh, big thanks to Kelly, Jill, and Joe, our wonderful, wonderful cast for playing. And thank you for watching. And a big thank you to Kyle for Woo! all of his hard work behind the scenes. Oh, that's the good yes. stuff right there. And also special thank you to Clayton for keeping us all organized as well. And always a uh, big shout out to Tabletop Audio for the ambient music. Check them out at tabletopaudio.com to uh, increase your own games at home. It's all free and we've used it all the time. Be sure to check out our merch store at the links below for our Teespring store. Uh, you can find your favorite Dungeon Dudes t-shirts uh, or you can check out the link bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. As well, if you are enjoying the stream and want to help support our work, please consider checking us out on Patreon. You can find out how by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. And we do have a phenomenal Discord channel that is open to all of our patrons. So if you do join the Patreon, you can catch us on Discord, chat with us, hang out, hear about all the fun stuff we get up to and just talk about nerdy things. And also we have a private channel where you can talk to Monty about theories on what else we might find in this tower of mystery. As always, Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel, where we cover everything Dungeons and Dragons, including advice for dungeon masters and guides for players. This week, we have a very fun episode on the five most powerful legendary weapons in Dungeons and Dragons Ooh. 5th edition coming out. We had a lot of fun making this one, and it's really cool. We, we scoured the Dungeon Master's Guide, and actually, I went into all the other campaign books, too, to try to find what, what we thought were the most insanely powerful magic weapons that you can find in D and D five. And they're insane. They're I all, can't they're, wait. I was going to yeah. say, is I there... talk about it a lot in the episode, but I just found that episode so inspiring for a campaign concept. And I'm like oh. mauling it over in my head yeah. now. Um, here's my radio voice time. <clears throat> Be sure to join us live next Tuesday when we record the campaign live on Twitch. Check us out at 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube. You can also find Dungeons of Drakenheim on the Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify if you want to take Drakenheim with you as a podcast. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time in the Dungeons of Drakenheim. Dungeons of Drakenheim.